there. How do you determine whether or not rape is wrong? Everybody's complaining. You. I, I had it twisted. How do you to determine that rape is right? Way. Ma'am, I'm asking her. Can no, we I'm answer her? You. I'm asking you. So, can you so once again, you who are you to I knew it. That it's okay. As minute I ask a real question, who are you people interrupt. I'm asking you a real question, and now I, you're falling away I, from the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already you're answered it. You're running from it because you're scared to face the truth. Is that, the, is that, is that what you're telling no, me? No, ma'am. It's very okay, simple. Okay, well, answer it. Then answer it. It's very simple. Who are you to say that is right? I'm not. I'm not anybody to say that's right. No, ma'am, I'm not. So somebody asked me earlier. What do you believe in? Real quick. Uh, somebody asked me earlier, uh, who are you to judge? And I tell people, I'm nobody to judge. They say, do you have the right to tell me what to do with my body? I said, no, I do not. But God does. All I'm saying is that this is what God says. It's irrelevant what I say. And people can't handle it. Who are you? Who are you? What do you believe in, bro? What do you believe in? It's kind of simple. It's very simple. I've been coming to this campus since 2007 telling you what I believe and what I believe is very po what I believe is very profound are you ready I'm a Christian I believe in the Bible I believe in the God of the Bible I get my I get my standard of right and wrong from this people cannot handle that uh, do you want to answer your question now yeah you think you can answer it without having the microphone stolen from you <laughs> so uh, as an agnostic how do you determine it's you know I know we're talking about rape or a specific thing like uh, abortion, but I'm saying anything. How does an agnostic determine what is good or evil? Number one. Number two, does evil actually exist? Yes or no? There is something. Yeah, put a microphone so we can hear you. Yeah? There is a bad in this world, whether it is what you say. What? You how do you determine what that bad is? A person, a society's opinion. Okay, so it's convention. You know what that means? A convention means it's relative. It's situated upon people's circumstance and place and time. So do you think ethics is situational? Do you think it's do you think ethics is bound to the time in which we live? So like for example, right now, uh, you reject something like pedophilia, correct? Yes. Do you know in Saudi Arabia, the basically the Pope of Saudi Arabia, the Grand Mufti who's a Sunni Muslim, you know that he said publicly a man to have a child bride as young as the age of nine years old is a Muslim right. Why are they wrong? These are scholars in Islamic because law. They are... How do you arbitrate between one proposition and the other? Did the child like it? What? For being alive. Okay, everybody listen very carefully because I get attacked on this all the time. We now have a person on the microphone getting ready to argue for pedophilia as long as the child consented. Is that the worldview you want to live in? That's how people are thinking on this campus. So think about that. So a, a professor at the University of Montreal just wrote a journal saying that pedophilia is a sexual orientation just like homosexuality. And it's statements and thoughts and ideas like this right. what are getting ready to come out of this person's mouth saying that as long as a child opts in, as then it's not wrong. Wow! Enough enough. I'm glad the camera's rolling because you know what? We record for our safety and for our record because I get a lot of lies told about me and you know things like that. But anyway, police told me you better film everything that you do. Where okay, does it great. say in the Bible that pedophilia is wrong? All sexual immorality is wrong as long as it's not between a man and a woman in a covenant of marriage. God gave us a design of marriage. Okay, so if he's, so if he's married to an eight-year-old. You can't marry an eight-year-old. The Jewish religion would abhor that. Would it? Yes, that's right. Uh, in the law, it speaks of a woman coming to age. It speaks of a woman What's coming... Age? What's that? What's the age? Well, that is... That, that is uh, a specific age is not given, but it's definitely post-puberty. But what Islam is talking about is prepubescent women, girls, little girls, being given over to grown men. The Bible doesn't know or support that, sir. So what is your stance on all the priests who were just outed for molesting small males? Well, it doesn't surprise me because celibacy is nowhere taught in the Bible because the Catholic priesthood is nowhere taught in the Bible. Next question. So you're forcing grown men to adopt celibacy who are not given the, what the Bible calls the gift of celibacy? 
no wonder these people are uh, they're sexually frustrated and they're taking it out on little children. I mean, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to know that that was going to happen. Right. You again. Good to see you. Yeah, I have a, yep. bit, more, I have a bit more time now. So I, oh, okay, yeah. Because yeah, you're always on the run. Yeah, I had to go to work last time. Okay, yeah. yeah. I still do, but I have more time, so that's good. <laughs> so, uh, I'm an atheist. Huh? I'd like to pose the question first. Yes. If you'd allow, allow me. Yeah. Okay. So, I was, you know, raised Christian, right? Okay. And part of the reason I left the faith, part of the reason, not the majority of it, uh -huh. is because I did not believe there was adequate enough justification to say that there is a God. Okay. And so I have I have a few questions posed to you. They're all basically the same question, but yes. I have to frame them differently. All right. One, on what basis do you say that there is a God? Two, on what basis do you say that's the Judeo-Christian God? And three, on what basis do you say that your interpretation is correct? I'm taking like a minor. Okay. Ready? Number one, on what basis do I say that there is a God? My position on the existence of God is that you know the existence of God based on the impossibility of the contrary. Listen very carefully the impossibility of the contrary. If something is impossible to be true, then isn't the opposite proposition correct? So for example, if the laws of logic must exist in order for you to deny the laws of logic, doesn't that prove the laws of logic, yes or no? The problem with what you're saying is that you're, 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 you're also violating the law of prediction. I can replace everything you I can replace the word God and everything that you said with Allah. Or well, we haven't gotten to that part of the equation. I'm simply saying that my argument for the existence of God is that without God, you can't know anything rightly. I don't. I don't agree with that. Okay, what do you know, and how do you know it? All right. So I, I, I without God, don't appeal to God. How do you, as an atheist, know anything for certain? Yeah, that's that's true. Well, you can make an epistemic case that no one, you know, there, there's a certainty that we may be wrong about everything. Okay, is it, are you certain that we may be wrong about everything? No, I'm not even certain about that. Okay, so are you making a meaningful statement at this point, or a meaningless well, statement? No, that's, it's still meaningful because it... How is it meaningful if you don't know it for certain? Because you, what you're, the, the approach that you're taking is a radical skeptical, you know. Is it true, is it, are you 100% certain of my skepticism? Well, no. So that's then why would you make the statement? This is what I'm saying. This is what happens to you when you deny your creator. Can you you end up making self-repeating statements. May I speak, please? Well, I know, but are, you're not you're not appreciating the fallacy of your logic. No, no, no. no. The you problem. used the fallacy earlier. Here's, here's the, the problem. Fallacy. Here's the problem. With that. <laughs> now, here's the problem try it again. Argument. You don't know anything for certain, but if, try to make a statement. If you allow me to, to speak, please. Okay, sure. All right. I'm just going to ask you the same question, though. Okay. Basically, knowledge as yep. defined, I think we agreed on this last time, is that knowledge is justified true belief. Do you know for certain that knowledge is justified true belief? Well, let me get to that, please. The reason that we can have an intelligible conversation is that we are predicated on certain axioms, right? Logic, reason, and those axioms are tautological, meaning that they're self-justifying. Guess what, what I'm going to ask you. The reason, well, the, it's axiomatic, they're assumption. Guess what I'm going to ask you about the axioms. How do you know? No, I'm going to ask you, do you know for certain that they're axiomatic? Yes. I thought, you'd, I thought point, you could be wrong about everything you claim to know. Some, well, here's the thing. That, uh, you, you're playing, playing with words here. No, I'm not. Those are not at all. This, this is not playing with I mean, words. There, the reason, you know, in philosophy, it's called a self-regress. It, it's it's an, an infinite it, regress. It's an I infinite agree. regress of ideas. I know what an infinite regress is. Good, because that's what you're committing. But here's the thing, though. Just because that, we, just because it is, you could make the case that we ought to stop the infinite regress. That doesn't mean that we can stop the infinite regress. If we could, at you could know it anyway, because according to you, you can't know anything for certain. At some point, at some point, we. Now, by just, the way, if you get that offended with back and forth, and you know he cut me off, I cut him off. If you're that sensitive and that offended, probably the microphone's not for you. At some point, uh, we all philosophically pull ourselves. To steal a phrase, yep. pull ourselves up by some proverbial bootstraps. I mean, uh, what, the assumption that we're making right here is that one, we're conscious beings. Uh, two, there's a separation between, you know, our perception and oh, our yeah, actual yeah. mind. Yeah. I mean, even to make the claim that there is a God, you have to. Have, those are predicated on certain axioms that you one, that there is a metaphysical God and that you can intelligibly argue for it. Two, that it's the God of the Bible. Three, that the Bible yeah. exists. Four, that it's accurate. There's. What I would tell you is that I can give you I can give you evidence that stacks up. Like for example, I was just reading with great delight this week. Uh, I think it was on Fox News or something. There's a multiple newsreels. They, they, according to them, well, it's it's not political. The archaeologists in Israel, according to Haaretz, the paper, the archaeologists, they're talking about archaeology all the time there. But this time, they found the city of Emmaus, which is mentioned in Luke chapter 24, uh, verses 27, uh, verses one and following. That there's an. Hold on a second. 
that that archaeological discovery is very encouraging to me as a Christian because I thought, oh, well, hey, for, for thousands of years now, they didn't know whether the town of Emmaus existed. Now, I have the Bible that tells me that Emmaus existed, absolutely, because Jesus was on the road to Emmaus with his disciples. But guess what? That encourages me as a Christian. But I can give you evidence that stacks all the way to the moon like that. With that the logical jump that you're making with that piece no, 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 of no, no, no. is that there's an I'm not giving you. Yeah, I'm not giving you the evidence. God. Yeah, I'm not giving you the evidence. Okay, you know me, why? Can you give me the evidence, please? No, 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 sir. The reason I would not give you that evidence is because that evidence would be interpreted according to your worldview. So what I'm saying is that your worldview dictates the way that you interpret the evidence. You're not neutral. You have a bias as you interpret the evidence. Uh, I think we you have, you have, no I'm not. No I'm not. There is no such thing as neutrality. I am you're either so you're, you're either neutral. you're either interpreting everything Christian theistically or non Christian theistically. That's it. So on what basis can you say that your system of you know, make you know analyzing these claims is any better than mine? I mean Well because of two things. Number one, I haven't surrendered certainty the way that you have, I haven't surrendered logic. Number two, I told you already, because of the impossibility of the contrary, without God you couldn't know anything rightly, and you have proven it to me. Do you? No, 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 no. The minute you say you don't know anything for certain, proves exactly what the Bible you says. You haven't proven that you can know anything for certain. Well, I can, but that's predicated on your worldview. See, to me, I can interpret reality. I know why we're here. I, I know what a human being is. A human being is a creature created in the image of God. That's why you don't kill it in the womb or outside of the womb. Okay, but if your worldview dictates naturalism, if your presupposition is naturalism that we are all in a naturalistic universe in a closed system, then that world worldview will preclude your interpretation of everything. Don't you see that? Right, but you still haven't justified why a Christian worldview is any more reliable than a, say, naturalistic or rationalistic or... Two reasons, because... Uh, I believe that the Christian worldview is internally and externally consistent, and I believe the competing worldviews are not. How are they not consistent? Well, because you say things like, I know for certain, I don't know anything for certain. You want right. to you want to change your worldview now so you can know things? All you've proven. Is you don't know anything. Right. <laughs> so that's why I asked you, are you making meaningful statement or meaningless statements, sir? Here's the thing. No, I'm not. I don't. I don't adopt this worldview. I have a Christian worldview that says knowledge is possible you're, because of God. You're making a radical skeptical claim, and I don't buy into skepticism. I'm not a skeptic. You are. That is a skeptical claim, though. What do you? I'm, that's a certainty claim. No, that is a skepticism. Uh, please explain to me how me telling you that as an atheist, you don't know anything for certain, even as you have said. Well, I'm not a skeptic. I'm an empiricist to begin with, right? You know everything empirically. No, because you can't. So then you're not an empiricist. That's not how that works. Yes, it is, sir. In other words, as a Christian, I would not adopt empiricism as my ultimate that's, worldview that's to interpret that, reality. That's not how that works. That's not what empiricism means at all. I mean that empiricism... How do you prove empiricism is valid? Right, because it has very, very philosophical checks, right? It must adhere Philosophy to is not given to empiricism, sir. Empiricism is based on sense perception. Right. But philosophy is abstract, not it's not material, it's not interpreted Empiricism by sense. Empiricism is a philosophical school of thought. Can you bring me a law of logic? A law of logic? Yeah, can we see it, can we touch it, taste it, or it's feel it? It's tangible, but it doesn't mean exactly. it's Exactly, it's immaterial because it's abstract. So here's the question, as an atheist, how do we have abstract laws of logic? Where do we get those? Again, I would argue that those are axiomatic, right? We, we have to... Okay, how we do we get axiomatic laws of logic? Because there is no way of having an, an even intelligible conversation. That's, called, that's a logical fallacy called begging the question. You've that's asked not. the same question over again. I'm asking you to explain it. No, 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 no. Because no. here's the thing. No, sir, hold on a second. You just committed a logical fallacy. I ask you, how do you know that the axiomatic laws of logic exist? And you know what he told here's me? The, you told me there are axiomatic laws of logic. That's a logical thing. fallacy. No, they're tautological. They're self-justifying. I mean, the fact that we can have an okay, intelligible... Okay, 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 let me ask you again. How do we have a tautological axiomatic law of logic. I'm not asking you I mean, to say that we do. I'm asking you how we can have that. You're asking me to justify something that doesn't need to be justified. I mean, the very fact that we're having an intelligible conversation is proof enough, right, that there, at some basis, we are assuming That's that That's a viciously there, circular argument, by the way. These are, cir these are circular... So you're okay with circular arguments? Because at some point you have to... So if I like, say God exists because God exists, you're okay with that? No, because that's still... That's still 
there is it's circular, just like your argument. But that's something that we can scrutinize. We can't scrutinize reason. You oh, can't what are you just talking talk about? There's people that don't agree on the laws of logic. Have you read a book of logic? Right. No, I. There's I, competing I views of logic, don't you know? I know. Right. Right. I, I, I so, uh, how do we determine the universal laws of logic? Well, there. <laughs> See, this is exactly what happens when you reject your Creator. You don't know yourself. You don't know the world around you, and you don't know God. It's the definition of being lost. Okay, just and yet you're trying to tell us emphatically how reality works. The person that doesn't know where they came from, who they are, where they're going, and what the world around them is. And you're trying to interpret reality for us. Sorry, I, as a Christian, I simply don't accept your skepticism as the, as the, as the grid to interpret reality. Okay, you, you want to make another statement about certainty? How do you know anything for certain without God? Well, like I said, because here's the thing, you're asking me to justify something that is already self-justified. No, it's not. Have you heard of the philosophical problem of truth in many minds? Absolutely. Have you heard of solipsism? Absolutely. If what I is solipsism? You're in the heart of solipsism. That, that's, that's, that's not relevant to this point right now. Actually, it is. There's a because point what's trying... going on in your mind, it is absolutely relevant. What's going on in your mind may not be going on in the mind of the person next to you. That has nothing to do with... So then who arbitrates between the two of you to determine truth? Can you answer that question? Well, here's the thing. At some point, the, 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 you're kind of ignoring the argument that I'm making. The argument that I'm making is that at some is, point... Has it ever been true that only one person among the group is right and everybody else is wrong? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try to make this point without you interrupting me, please. Go ahead. Uh, so what I'm arguing is essentially is that you and I, yeah. right, we both make axiomatic assumptions at some point where we, to steal a phrase again, pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. And it's, that's what Sam Harris says, uh, who's a philosopher. Right? And so to say that, that we need to justify things such as reason is itself cannot be intelligible unless we have an axiom for reason. Could you be wrong about that? Yes, that's what I'm saying. So then do you know that for certain, what you just said? So then why would you say it? Well, the thing and is... You can't know it for certain. How much of the pie of knowledge do you have in the pin? Let's say all of life is contained here in this pie. How much of that pie of knowledge, as a sentient being, how much of that do you have? How much of that do I have? Yeah, how much, what percentage would you uh, argue you have of that? Probably a pretty small amount. Okay, do you think that... Do you think, do you think that the... Do you think that the antip antithetical truth of your statement could be outside of your your percentage of knowledge? Sure, but... but yes or no? Yes. So that means that you even say that the greater percentage of what's knowable is actually outweighs what you know. And you could be wrong. That's exactly what I've been saying, and I say there's no problem. And you that. call me a skeptic? You're the skeptic. No, 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 no. I, you don't know anything for certain, and yet you're telling us and you're telling us here that you know for certain that we all live by these axioms. <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm a Christian. I'm a, I'm a Christian. My worldview is very simple. My worldview is very simple. Knowledge does not come from me. It is not. It is not derived from me. It doesn't come from this universe. It doesn't come from this system. It comes from the mind of God, and thankfully God has revealed himself in such a way that we can know here's, him. Here's the problem with your statement. Uh, I could replace yeah. every single word you just said uh -huh. with Allah, Zeus, the ghost well, of my... Well, try it, then you have a complete worldview. The ghost, the ghost you know of what the difference is? The difference is, is that... You as have I, to as justify I study, why you're right. Yeah, if, uh, two reasons. Number one, because when you do an internal critique of, of whatever worldview that you're talking about, and an external critique of that worldview, first of all, it doesn't stack up to the Christian worldview. You mentioned Allah. No basis. Internal contradiction and in and oh. external evidence. Yeah. Oh, so the Christian worldview is extremely consistent, correct? Totally. Or else I wouldn't be a Christian. The, 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 the Christian worldview is internally consistent or else I wouldn't be a Christian. Of course. Okay, you, you say knowledge comes from God, right? I'll pull the microphone up so people can hear you. Do you say that knowledge comes from God? You, you can walk that, up right? and move the thing so you don't have to be bent down. I wouldn't want to stand like that. Hey. <laughs> What? I want him to be heard, sorry. Do you believe that knowledge comes from God in the of Bible? Of course. Then where does God ever tell us about math, science, physics, any anything? There is absolutely none of that in the Bible. So uh, you're right. The Bible, is not, if the Bible is not a book on mathematics or a book on then philosophy book or on ethics knowledge. or epistemology. Then it's not a book on knowledge. Right. What it is, is, it's something even further and deeper than that. But what it claims is this, 
Yeah, but what it claims is this, is that all knowledge is in God. Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. So by virtue of making that universal statement, we can say that without God, therefore, the laws of logic, mathematics, cannot and do not exist and are not consistent without God. It's that simple. But they didn't come from God. He doesn't have to give you a book on math to tell you that he is the necessary precondition for math. If all knowledge comes from him, then it would come from him, though. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that what God is claiming is that by virtue of God, and then his revelation to man. Man in the image of God is a is a is a, is a, 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 a rational being. Because if you're made in the image of God according to the Bible, but like not. God, you're rational. Oh, okay, sweet. You're this, logical. This is a great point. Humans, yeah. are, humans are made in the image of God, right? Yes, sir. You think we were intelligently designed? Of course. Okay, so how come we have um, we breathe and eat down the same tube, and that's why we can choke? Whales and dolphins do not bleed down the same. They can't choke. A, a whale could have something clogged in its throat and it wouldn't choke. We get shit clogged in our throat and we choke and die. How is <laughs> well, that all, you're designed? Interpreting, well, first of all, you're interpreting things along the lines of a fallen world with sin in it, with sin and decay and death. So when man, when God so, created so man, we, so he didn't design us. When God created man originally, he was in a state of innocence and a state of righteousness. He, essentially, he was without flaw and there was nothing wrong with him. So everything in his body worked perfectly. There was nothing that he could not do in terms of what God ordained him to do. God made man what he wanted to make him. If he wanted man to fly, he would have gave him wings. And so God created man the way in his, in his, uh, and for his purpose, the way he wanted to. So, so to ask man to be something other than what he is, I mean, that's not, a moot no, argument, no, because not that's asking, not what God no, designed. I'm not saying we should be huh? another way. I'm saying if we are intelligently designed, then why can we choke? Why do we have an appendix? Why do we have toenails? Why do we have a gallbladder? Because of sin. And in terms so, of, in terms so of, of many, no, 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 not a gallbladder. Garden, nothing's going on. In terms of a gallbladder, there are, sudden, there are plenty of scientific it. papers written on the proper and necessary function of a gallbladder, okay? But I'm not here to argue that. I'm here to say, if God is God, he created us in his image, then the way he created us is right. It's not, though. I mean, I don't expect you to believe that it is because you, you don't have a Christian worldview. Because if I was designed the minute you don't have a Christian worldview, not be able to choke, not have an appendix that doesn't do anything but blow up. Like, wow, that's so intelligent. Yeah, when your body malfunctions, it's because of sin. No. So you, you don't oh, have so, a, so when our body malfunctions, it's because of sin? So all these uh, childhood cancer patients are yes. just giant sinners? Oh, no, no, no. God. No, it's because sin You're is... a happy man. You're a charmer. No, sir, listen to the argument. Listen to the argument. I didn't say that. I said because sin, because of sin, everything breaks down in this world, including our bodies. Because of sin, the sun is running out of energy. Because of sin, entropy exists. The sun is running out because of energy of because of fusion. <laughs> But entropy exists because of sin. The world is the, the world is not eternal. It's because of sin. You know, the flower fades, the flower the flower fades, the grass withers because of sin. Your body is dying because of sin. Just go take a stroll down a graveyard, and you will be reminded that because of sin, people die, and you will die, and you will stand before God on the day of judgment. And so, none of these arguments will matter a hill of beans. So all living things will die because of sin, right? Is of course. Death a, came through sin, the Bible says. Have you ever heard of an eternal jellyfish? No. There are jellyfish that don't die. Really? Can you kill it? Yeah, you can kill it. But there you go, then it dies. Die, <laughs> it will never die. <laughs> boy, oh boy. And the Bible says whatever's alive at the time of his coming, he will kill it. He will do away with it. And so, one way or another, everything will succumb to death. Because this world that we live in is not the end for man. You have to be resurrected and live with God in heaven. Then and only then will you be truly who you were meant to be. Now, let me ask you a quick question, because you've asked me a series of questions. So you're not a Christian. No, or an atheist. You are an atheist. So yes, as sir. an atheist, how do you determine morals, meaning, and beauty? Philosophy. Okay, so uh, how does philosophy give you meaning? The philosophy has a bunch of different ways to okay. determine morals and what's right or wrong. Like what? I've been studying philosophy a long time. I've never found an argument in philosophy that justifies meaning, you morals, and beauty. I mean, I was just reading Immanuel Kant last night, and he was a great philosopher. He presupposed, he presupposed the existence of God, but even Immanuel Kant would say that, that God and man will never meet, number one. Number two, man will never know for certain what reality is. 
Okay, so uh, if depends you, on what, what you mean by reality. Reality. Yeah, I mean, what do you mean by that? Well, what we're living in, metaphysically. What is metaphysics? Metaphysics is the theory of reality. Reality is what is real, what is true, and what is true is what is real, and what is real is what is true. In a sense, they're coterminous. Yeah. Yeah. So, how does an atheist know what is real? Like you're stand are you sure you're talking and you're standing here? How do you know you're not in a matrix? Because we use science. To a new religion, Church of the Flag Spaghetti Monster. Yeah! Uh, yeah, I know things for certain because of philosophy and math. I, I guess I technically do not but know philosophy for certain. And there's, math, there's not an answer for philosophy and system. math. There's not an listen quickly. Philosophy and math presuppose the validity of your reason. How do you know your reason is valid? Because right? science. The reason, philosophy, reasoning, logic. That's a that's a viciously circular argument. Number one, number two is begging the question. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you whether I didn't ask you whether or not there was logic or reason. I asked you, how do you know it's valid? And you know what you told me? Because there's logic. That's what. That what's valid? Your reason, your faculties. Logic has been proven to be true, and so has math, and so has science. It, wait a minute. When you when you examine the evidence that supposedly, according to you, proves the validity of logic, did you use your reason? Do you follow the argument? When you examine the evidence, because you said logic's been proven to be true. When you examine the evidence of logic, do you use your reason to do that? Depends on what you mean by reason. Your mental faculties. Uh, you're trying to like trick me into a definition to say like what else would you do? Okay. Other than okay. How would you de how would you define your reason then? How? Okay. Let's say how do you? <laughs> epistemology. So, okay. Your epistemological faculties. How do you know they're valid? I don't understand. I like. You know what the word epistemology is right? No, like really. uh, your theory of knowledge. So how do you know what you know? <laughs> Basically, right? And when you say, well, I know what I know because of the laws of logic, I'm going to ask you. That presupposes the validity of your reason, that you're not delusional, that you're not a brain in the bath, that you're not in the matrix, that you're not in a padded room somewhere with a needle in your back, uh, just imagining this I whole could, day. I could be all of those. If you could be all really of those, matter. hold on a second, if you could be all those things, then you do not know truth for certain. I do. Two plus two is four. You want to recant? Okay, so they, hold on a second. Well, that could be, that, that, the, the, the equation of two plus two is four could be fed to you through some simulation, like it doesn't matter Elon Musk says. No, that's true. What's that? That's awesome. It doesn't matter to me if it's fed or not. It doesn't matter to me if it's fed to me or not. Two plus two is four, it's a fact. No, it's not. Not, not, if, not, if, not if it's just a simulation. Not if it's just an illusion in your mind. Hold on. Did you just say that? Like the Buddhist reality. Uh, according to the Buddhist reality, all life is illusion. So if they're right, then if they're right, this whole conversation is an illusion. And making a distinction according to uh, Buddhism is actually the most illogical thing okay, you can let's do. Say, let's say that I am a brain in the bat right now. Yeah, you wouldn't know it. Yeah. Okay, so since I can't know it, and if you can't know you're just not a brain in the bat, you can't know God doesn't exist either. The best way for me to carry out my life is to keep acting like I am right now. What good would it do to, to act like Oh, I know, because... Oh, I know, because in Christianity, sense. the Bible says you will live according to your God-given conscience. So I know everyone here, no matter how ardent of a of an atheist or agnostic you are, according to the Bible, everybody lives like an agnostic, or like a Christian. Even if you're agnostic, atheist, you hate God, you still live like a Christian. What do you mean, live like a Christian? Well, I'll prove it to you. If somebody came up to you right now, hit you over the head, stole your skateboard, and took your backpack, you would want the officers that are here, you, you would want the officers that are here to go after that person, arrest that person, or probably put that person in jail for assault, give you your stuff back. Why? Because thou shalt not steal. And you live by that maxim every day of so your all, life. So, all, so anybody that's not a Christian will, lives by that? Of course. So how about thieves? Because of God's God-given conscience, just like he says in Romans chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Everybody has a God-given conscience, and the God-given conscience that we have tells us in a general way that things like stealing and murder are wrong. So we had another atheist on the microphone here. Uh, let me just before Actually, you say. Before you. Yeah, before you say. Uh, just to. Would you be quiet for a minute, please? Just to finish up what I was talking to this young man with. I'll let you speak if you're calm and rational. I just want to finish. Okay, it would be nice if you would stop talking. I just want to finish a good conversation I had with this hey, young man by I saying. I am speaking right now. That. <laughs> <laughs> a conversation that he and I just had. That you be not judged for what that judgment you 
you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured. Now I'm you. glad I turned the microphone on. Uh, but the conversation I just had with this young man proved what I just said. That without God, you can't know anything for certain. And this young man, unless he wants to recant, just told us he could be in the matrix. He could be a brain in the vat. He could be a simulation. Well, if that's true, then you don't know anything for certain. Just exactly like God says, when you deny your creator, the Bible says God gives you over to futility of mind. You cannot know for certain that you exist, that you know. Like Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. And then another philosopher came, came down the line and said, no, no, no. Uh, you know what he should have said is, I think, therefore thinking is going on. Because you already assume the existence of yourself. You see, further down, like what we're talking about, infinite regression. And according to atheistic, agnostic worldviews, you know less and less and less the more and more you say. You become more and more ignorant as you go, because you know less and less to validate every statement that you're making. So that's why I asked you from the very beginning, are you making meaningful statements or meaningless statements? My friend, if you do not know that you are not a brain in the vast, then every statement you're about to make is, in a sense, meaningless, because it's futile. Wouldn't you agree with that? And he said, wow, Go ahead. I'm not even Give it a second. I'm not even sure a little delay, but... Uh, 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 no, I wouldn't say it's meaningless at all. Gave, gave okay, because you want to try it again? Because I don't think that any of us can know anything for certain. Hard solipsism, look it up, there's not an answer for it. You can't be certain that you're not a brain in a vat. There's absolutely no way to prove it. Last Tuesday is, and you cannot prove that the world was not created last Thursday. Oh, I disagree with that on the basis of the Christian it. worldview. Okay, so I'm saying, how do you prove it? <clears throat> Two ways. Number one, because... God has revealed himself to us in such a way that we can know him. Hold on, let me finish. God has revealed to himself to us in such a way that we can know him and we can know certain things for certain. Okay? Number two, because you just admitted that you don't know anything for certain, my proposition could be right, right? I, d I said I know, I know some things for certain. It's not okay, everything. let's try it again. Two plus two is four, sir. I don't know what to tell you. It's true. It doesn't matter my worldview or not. Two plus two is four. Appro uh, carbon has six... Okay, so then I'm going to ask you, so then I'm going to ask you, if 2 plus 2 equals 4, how did we all universally, how are we all arriving at the same laws of logic without a lawgiver, a universal lawgiver? Especially if you rewind the tale, right? I mean, if we go back it's and, and do, it's you believe absurdly, in evolution? Yes. <laughs> I don't, well, actually, right. no, I don't believe in it. I oh, accept, you don't believe in evolution? I accept it as true. Okay, I don't right. This is coming from someone that doesn't know anything for certain, but according to you, uh, you say you know one thing for certain, that's 2 plus 2 equals 4. But you know what? That is not a truthful statement because that's not a brute fact. You know why? Because there are no such things as brute facts. 2 plus 2 is 4 is not a brute fact. Oh, no, it's not. It presupposes okay. the laws of mathematics, it, it presupposes the laws of logic, and it presupposes metaphysics and epistemology. All of that is presupposed in your answer. See, so you can't it have just one brute fact by itself. You have a worldview, but you can't justify your worldview. I can. Ju I can All you I can, can do prove is that two plus two is four yeah. right now. You cannot prove That's, to me that God yeah, is yeah, yeah. right now. What's that? I said I can prove that that math, science, and <laughs> philosophy are true right now. You cannot prove to me that God is real right now. How? If you can be a simulation? I can still prove it to you whether I'm, whether I'm in a simulation you, you or not. I can prove you that math is no, true, sir. You cannot say yes, prove. Can. The only thing you can say is that there's a probability or a potential of what I'm saying is no, true. No, 2 plus 2 is 4, 100% okay, so of the time. Okay, so then you have epistemic certainty. You have you have actually examined all facts in the universe, yes. and you know them exhaustively. No, no. Okay, so then you can't know if You certain. have not done that either. No, I have not, but I have revelation from God who has. Prove it. Without him, you can't know anything for certain, and you just proved it by saying, no, I can't you know. You can't prove yours either, sir. <laughs> see, see, when you say you can't... At, you asked me to prove it. Right. When you say you can't, when you say you can't prove yours, you're no longer an agnostic uh, in your thinking or a skeptic in your thinking. Now you know certain things for certain. Yes. Now you know, now you actually know what I know for certain. You're saying that. I don't know what you know, I'm not in your brain. Well, sir, you're telling me you cannot prove that. That's an emphatic statement, an infallible oh, statement. Okay, well, then can you prove it? Of course, without it, you can't know anything for certain. Well, will you? The impossibility of the contrary is the best path to certainty. Now, will you prove it? Hold on a second, my man. Let me, let me, try to follow me for a second here, okay? I'm really trying. Okay. Aristotle was asked, how do you know the laws of logic exist? You know what the answer was? I don't know. He said, try to deny them. Okay. 
Isn't that the path to certainty? In other words, if you try to deny the laws of logic, one second, if you try to deny the laws of logic, how are you going to do that without logic? Right? Hold on. I knew, I, this is why I asked you to concentrate, because you'll be distracted. Let me say it again. When Aristotle said, the attempt, to deny it, right. the attempt to deny the laws of logic asserts the law, establish the laws of logic. In a sense, that argument is exactly what I'm arguing for the Christian faith. The attempt to deny the Christian God asserts the Christian God because without him you cannot know anything for certain. So you're saying if I can, if I can prove because that's... Because unless you know all things, my friend, unless you know all things, you cannot make an infallible statement in your worldview. Then neither can you. Sir, that's not a statement consistent with your worldview. That's I'm state, asking about that's state, state, you. You didn't ask, you made a truth claim. You didn't ask me anything. You I, I, made a truth claim about that what I can know. I'm asking you, I don't mean it as in you literally can't. I'm, I'm trying to provoke you in order to... I already told you the answer, but you don't like the answer. No, the answer is, what is, is the that... Proof? Okay, I'll give it to you again. <laughs> the proof is very simple. The proof is that without God, you can't know anything at all. And if God is the necessary precondition for knowledge, for intelligibility, That's for logic, for philosophy, as well. well, it is circular to one degree. Because when you're talking about, when you're, listen, when you're talking about answering the question of your worldview, you cannot appeal to anything other than your worldview, or else you would adopt that worldview that you appeal to. I'm not appealing to anything you are. <laughs> yeah, like I said. You are. Like I said, I don't appeal to anything outside the Christian worldview because the Christian worldview is self-authenticating, self-proving, self-sustaining. If it's self-authenticating, it's That's a right. circular argument and it's logically invalid. It's the, it's the only argument That's that, circular, given, that's true. that given the circularity of it, <laughs> that given the circularity of it, establishes it. But you are in a far worse place because your arguments are bound to be circular as well, but your arguments are viciously what circular. What am I arguing for? The validity of your reason with your reason, for example. The validity of logic with logic, for example. The validity of the laws of mathematics with mathematics, for example. The validity of philosophy with philosophy, for example. Okay, but when you do it with... That's the, called circular reasoning. When you you do it with, but when you do it with the claim to God and then back that up with another claim to God, it's... Yeah, because it's if you don't have an infinite reference point... It makes no sense. Yes, it does. They're both circular we have a, I have an infinite reference point, you have an infinite regression, period. That's it. That's right. And I'd like a, a, anyone to come and tell me why I can't trust this book. Okay, okay, sweet, yeah. yeah. You think it's 100% true, word for word? Of course. Okay. No, I'm a Christian. Really I mean, okay. no, part of my Bible is false. <laughs> you okay. know, like I'm going to stand up here and say that. Well, I guess some liberal Christians would say so that, but I'm not a liberal right? Christian. Yeah. I believe the Bible consistently. Okay. I've been studying the Bible. I would agree that. Um, How old are you? 21. So I've been studying the Bible now for as long as you've been alive, okay. Okay. and I have yet to hear a single argument okay. why I cannot trust the Bible. All right, sweet. Okay, what about the Bible? I know, I know you know the story of Noah's Ark. Church. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it didn't happen. Okay, how do you know that for certain? Okay, it, it, let, me, let me get this right. It says all animals, every animal on earth, two of every kind. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is that, like three or four of every unclean kind? Um, all got on ark, right? That's how the story goes. I believe what the Bible says, Genesis 6 through 9, yeah. But is that, that's what it says, every animal, right? Uh, the animals that God put in the ark. It doesn't say every animal. It says God, the, God put animals two by two in the ark. It's not a scientific statement. I don't. I'm pretty sure it says. I'm pretty sure it says two of every animal. Two of yeah, it's, it's like two of every kind, okay, and then like three of sure, every sure. unclean or something like sure, that. Sure, sure. Okay, yeah, two of every kind. That's what it says. Exactly what it says. Okay, so. So okay, so every no, it no, it, it does say every time. I'm pretty sure it does. Okay, okay. so what's the point? The point is, we all know the story. Of the point is, kangaroos are Noah. only native to Australia. Yeah. There are no fossil records of kangaroos anywhere but Australia. So tell me how the kangaroos got on the ark. Did they hop off of Australia, swim all the way to Jerusalem, <laughs> hop on the ark, and then when the ark landed, they swam all the way back? Not Sam. The flying spaghetti monster put Because it didn't happen. There's no record. Of, there's no record of kangaroos on any continent other you know how than many, Australia. You know how many articles written by PhD Christian scientists that answer all these questions? There's I honestly, I personally don't care. I personally don't care how a kangaroo 
got on Noah's Ark because or got off didn't. Noah's Ark. I take it based on the record of Scripture, and the reason I take it based on the record of Scripture because I can't verify every jot and tittle. I can't verify every insect that supposedly survived so the flood. So if you can't verify you know every saying? jot and tittle, then how do you know that 100% of it's true? Because what it records is true. It's not, though. I it's just not given to record not. everything exhaustively. This is what we talked about earlier, that... The laws of, lo for example, the Bible is not a book on the laws of logic, but how do I know that the so laws of logic are valid? Well, because the Bible says God is the God of all wisdom, all logic, all reason is bound up in God. How can I verify that exhaustively on my own? I cannot. I have to have revelation from God. And so because I have revelation this when I from God, home. you must admit that I he might because it, you don't so. know for certain that it's not. I do know for certain that kangaroos are, did not get on the ark. Well, I know you don't. You weren't there. You were not there. Right. No, you were not there. Okay, what was there? Yeah. Kangaroos, No, no, right? you were not there. No, but the kangaroos were, right? And whatever animal was needed in order for kangaroos to exist so after the flood was no there. kangaroos were, but yet there's no kangaroo fossils there. Right. Uh, I don't know. I haven't examined the fossil because evidence. Because there's so. not. Yeah. I would just recommend. I, I wouldn't check the evidence. Either. I would. I, mean, I would just tell you to go read. Go read the experts on the flood. You know, Henry Morris. Uh, even my friend Ken Ham. You can go ask him. You know, all those guys. Jason Lyle. You know, these these guys can. Okay, go 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 ask Jason Lyle. You know, Jason Lyle has a PhD in no, physics. He's I, very smart. I will he go can ask sit him, here and just. Ask him he'll talk to you to your blue in the face about kangaroos if you'd like. I'm talking about a broader issue, which is the world. I'm talking about a broader issue. Whether your, your book is 100 percent true or not. Just because it doesn't give you a account of kangaroos, that doesn't multiply it. It does. Yes, it does. The animals because that it are says every animal and not that's every not animal. That's not a contradiction. I don't alive. think you understand how it is a contradiction. No. Literally, definition. No. No, it says it every animal, not every animal was there. Yeah. So the, how is that? The laws of contradiction state in this case that A and non-A cannot be both true in the same way and at the same time. That's not what you have in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, for exactly. example, uh, the proposition that you're making. It says that absolutely every single kangaroo was on the ark. That's not what it says. It says two of every. Two of every kind. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you have no yeah. way of falsifying that. You can I, I, told, I just did. That's not conclusive. There's no, there's no fossil evidence, and it's not just kangaroos. It's anything native to it's Tasmania not or the Galapagos Islands. Or yeah, it's not like conclusive that. evidence. It is totally yeah. conclusive. Nope. Uh, well, we Two of every animal, just a flat-out lie yeah. in the Bible. Yeah, we yeah, disagree. It is. I'm sure we do disagree because I wouldn't want to admit that my holy book was wrong. Yeah. No, uh, like I said, all of these particulars about Noah's Ark and the flood, they've all been worked out ad ignosium by so many Christian thinkers. Uh, we just disagree. I think the testimony of Scripture is uh, sure, and you don't. But I can give you evidence of that. Like I told you earlier, I can give you archaeological evidence. I was just in the Middle East. I was just in Israel. I was amazed at the exhaustive archaeology of the Bible. Exhaustive. It just blows your mind. You get At the end of the day, you're tired of so much evidence, so much information. Exactly where the Bible says something was, there it was. The manuscripts that we have, there they are. If you go home, you, you lay in your bed, your head on the pillow at night, you're just like, wow, the mountains of evidence, right? I don't present that evidence because, because it's you'll interpret evidence. it according to your worldview. Because it's not evidence. That's yes, why you it don't is. have enough here. That's why you're only up here. So archaeology is not evidence. If you had evidence, you would be up here presenting it to us. If there was legit evidence for the, the for the existence of God, it would win a Nobel Prize, and it would be on the front page of every single newspaper. No, there is no evidence for the existence of God. Then why do you believe it? But but what I'm saying is that because God, you already know that there is a God. You don't need evidence. The Bible says every person knows God exists in their heart of hearts. In other words, a piece of rock is not going to make you believe in God. A manuscript is not going to make you believe in God. But even if you accumulate all the evidence and stack it up to as high as the moon, that will not make you believe in God. Jesus even went further. Jesus said, even if I performed a miracle in your sight, you would not believe in God. He could raise a person from the dead in, your, in front of your eyes and in your heart of hearts because your heart is darkened by sin. Because of your given worldview, you would interpret that miracle according to your to your worldview. You would rationalize a way out of infallible proof. The same way that you rationalize your way out of the God could take you in this very moment into heaven, show you His face, put you back on the earth, and you would say, "Aliens have had abducted me." See, according to your worldview, you have already 
rigged no, the no, evidence. No. That's why you need a heart change. That's why you need a new mind and you need, you need a new heart. I'm a not new willing world to any view. change. I'm willing to have my mind changed uh, if you present me with we any evidence of the contrary. We disagree as to what you are. We disagree as to what you are. Your anthropology is different than mine. I'm telling you that your anthropology is made up of a spiritual darkness, which you reject. And unless God does you a prove, sovereign work... Can you prove that humans are made up of any sort of spirit or soul? No, they're made out of spirit. Uh, of course I can, but it's proof you would never accept. Because it's not proof. It's revelational in nature, which you don't accept it, given your worldview. But then again, given your worldview, you can't know anything for certain. Except for math. No, Science. you can't know that for certain, sir. No, you cannot. For all you know, you're a brain in the vat, or you have a needle in your back right now, and you're in a psycho ward somewhere, with, in a padded room, and you're just imagining all of this. You could be a government ex experiment. You could be laying some, languishing in some, in some uh, a room somewhere, in some warehouse. We don't know. You, I mean, you don't know. <laughs> so when you don't know that, you don't know that God does not exist. So when you sit here and argue, so when you sit here and argue against the knowledge of God and against the existence of God, what you're doing is actually futile. How do we know your God is just a simulation? Right? Is it your God just a simulation? That's the only thing I've haven't. I'm I'm not out here saying that God does not exist. All I was doing is saying that there's something in your. Unless you can prove, sir. Unless you can prove, sir, that you're not in a dream or in a brain in the vat or something like that. If you have some transcendental evidence for that, I'd like to see it. But if all you have is an appeal to your reason, can you prove that's that not you are proof. not a brain in a vat? Yes, but you don't accept the proof based on your worldview. Well, does make any sense? It does, actually. Give it your worldview, the proof I give you that I'm not a brain in the vat, you will not accept it. I'm asking you okay. to give it to me, and then we'll see if I... I'll give it to you again, ready? The Bible says I'm created in the image of God to know God and to glorify Him. The Bible says that we're not in a state of, of a dream. That this is a real world, that He's going to bring it to an end one day. It had a beginning, it will have an end. There. Do you accept my evidence? I told you you wouldn't. <laughs> so, so there you go. Because I'm a Christian, you already knew the answer. It's because you're quoting a book that's false. If I'm quoting a book that's false, according to your worldview, you wouldn't know it anyway. See, this is what the Bible says, when you reject your creator, he gives you over to the utility of mind, a darkened mind, so that you cannot know yourself rightly, you cannot know the world around you rightly. What are you doing to my microphone? It's, it's like not Just it leave it alone and lift it up. I'm trying to do this. You didn't need to do that. I don't know. <laughs> Just lift the pole up, sir. It's not like sticking or anything. Jai, maybe you can help him. Sorry, can you, can you Dude, that pole didn't sink, you can't do that. Do you like to tighten that? Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pull the cord up. I do not. I, I wish. Do you have one? Just don't touch it. Oh, my plant! It's a miracle! No, my plant! Oh, oh your plant! plant. Oh, I'm sorry. Your adopted plant. Anyway. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. You have a question for me about the Christian worldview, about the Bible? Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can I get a water? Are you a Muslim? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I have a bottle of water first, please? I've been, like, standing here. You saw me over there. Uh, yeah, I got a bottle of water. I have maybe one more I can part with. Wally, you want to get it out of there? Holy water, man. Um, you see some shit. Uh, you have a question for me? If you're Muslim, we disagree. I have my Quran here. I'd like, to oh, cool. I'd like for you to explain the contradictions in the Quran. Oh, there's a lot the of contradictions in the Quran. There's a lot of Oh, there are. So why are you still Muslim? You're happy with contradictions? Because I have faith. Just as you have faith. Oh, no, sir. That's called fetism. That's not the definition in the Bible oh, of faith. Fetism. I'm hungry. Have you ever read the book of Hebrews in the Bible? Nope. I just know that. Okay, Hebrews know. chapter 11 does not define faith as fetism. It defines faith as a conviction of things that you know for certain. So, uh, we have a, we have a totally de definition of faith. Your faith is built on a blind leap into the dark. My faith yes. is my faith is built on the the concrete certainty <laughs> that God has revealed Himself in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Okay, so at the end of the towards the end of the Quran, uh, yep. uh, Prophet Muhammad reveals a verse from God that says, "Today I have perfected your religion." So was this ever was a similar uh, was a similar revelation ever made in the Bible that today I have perfected your religion or in the he, in the Hebrew Bible? Has any similar claims been made that, at this point, the religion is complete? Uh, no, I, 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 we have a totally different approach to religion, because according to Islam, what you believe in is what's known as tanzil, 
I don't know if you've heard that word, but tanzil means handed down. It means that the golden plates of the Quran that are eternal with Allah in heaven were handed down to Muhammad through the angel Jabril, Gabriel. And therefore, what you have is totally different than what I have in the Bible. The Bible is a book by 40 different authors, 66 books over 1,500 years of time in three continents. And that is what the Bible, when the, they wrote down the Bible, it's called the Anustas. It is a God-breathed word. It is a living word of God. It is not that it was contained on golden tablets in heaven forever, and then it was simply dictated to man. You have a dictation view of revelation, and I have an inspiration so, so view of dictation. Is your, uh, is your religion also, is just a philosophy, like a combined philosophy not fully given by it's God? It's a world in life view. Just in, it's just God and without biblical gave you information. Right. And and without, this is a perfect people, example that shows other religions. That the people wanted, like they, they got their revelation from God, and then they're like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to write about that. And then they wrote, like, oh, yeah, this thing is true, too. It must, because God trusted in me. It's the same thing that happens in Islam. Like, no, people, sir, it's people not. Reference, people you reference have not the, studied the doctrine of inspiration. People reference the, what's it called? Uh, the prophet's words, the sayings, uh, I can't recall what they're, what they're called at this point. But The hadith? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, people reference the hadith. Yeah, but, it's called an isnad. An isnad is a chain of tradition that supposedly goes back to Muhammad himself through various isnad readings, which means that you have, so you know, such and such person heard from such and such person that heard from such and such person that the prophet false. said this. Yeah, and it's yeah. false. It was compiled by a single person who went through a entire compilation of hadiths. Yeah, his name was uh, Buhari. Sahih al-Buhari. Nine volumes by Buhari, which uh, a big part of the Muslim world does not even accept, i.e. the Shia Muslim. I'm, sh I'm Shia Muslim. There, that's why you don't accept it. Yeah, and a lot of Sunni Muslims <laughs> who accept it. It's but so if you don't accept the, listen, if you don't accept the Hadith, if you don't accept the Hadith, then you don't have the traditions to go back to know how the Quran came together, do you? The point, the point of Sun Shia Islam, the point, the philosophy from my sect of Islam, Shia Imami Islam. I don't know why we're Islam. talking about Islam. You're a person that came up to the microphone. Yes, I'm, a second, second. I'm, I'm glad to talk about I'm, Islam, but it's amazing. I'm talking to somebody who claims to believe in Islam, but yet believes that the Quran is full of contradictions. Because it is. We're given well, why would you believe in Islam then? Because we're given a physical leader why not the cast, ages. Why not cast it off to the side as a deceptive book? If that's what it is. If this book was full they, of lies, they, I wouldn't be here today. But they all have deceptions in them. No, sir. No, how can one we person disagree. go into a we whale disagree. and survive? We simply disagree. I'd like, like 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 for you to prove where the Bible has deceptions in it and lies and contradictions. How can a person survive in a whale for more, <laughs> like, through the entire digestive system? Do you believe that God created the world? No, I believe a spaghetti no, master did. Do you believe that God created the world? It's a strange... It's you believe that God is powerful? God is powerful, powerful, but He gave us free will. And okay, but we be, have okay, before we get to the free will conversation, do you believe that, that God is omnipotent? Yes. So that God is omnipotent, He can create the heavens and the stars and the moon, and He can't cause a man to survive in the belly of a whale? Why not? He's God. He's all-powerful. You know, there's actually rare occurrences, in, even in our human history, that we know that has actually happened. People have been swallowed by a whale or a great fish and survived somehow. You can find did evidence they, did of they that. Did they or did they come out the mouth? I don't know. But, they... yeah, but the Bible says that the, that the Jonah is actually spit out by the great fish. And God can do that if he wants, right? If he's omnipotent. Whales are mammals, not fed. But, I mean, I believe in a book that says donkeys talk. Hey, man. So I, I, hold on one second. I believe in a book that says donkeys talk. I believe in a book that says Jesus walked on water. I believe in a book that says the apostles raised people from the dead. Why? Because I have a Christian worldview. I accept the word of God for what it is. I let the God I let God speak for himself. I let the word of God speak by itself and stand on his own two feet. If you don't believe the Bible is the word of God, you shouldn't accept anything in the Bible. You could know if it's true. Yeah, and you also believe it's in a, a book that says don't judge your neighbors, so that's very profound. How long did it take you to think of that? Anybody have another question for me about Christianity or the Bible? Yeah. Obviously, uh, Islam and Christianity are incompatible. We do not agree. Boy, what about Spain? Uh, yeah. That, that was such a long time. Okay, in our history, uh -huh. in Spain, they yeah. existed. Christians, Jews, and Muslims under Muslim rule. 
It doesn't. Uh, okay, let's, let's, rule. Let's, let's put away the point of Muslim he rule. He thinks we get let's to be a dimmy. You know what a dimmy is? A dimmy is a person, so according to Sharia law, to that has to pay taxes to the Muslim and the Muslims and the Christians were all studying together no. philosophy and they were agreeing and disagreeing. No. They were I, I think, disagreeing. no, you're deceiving these people. Do you understand what Dimitude is? They what is Dimitude? Would you the tell time. them what Dimitude is? No, I do not understand what that word is. Okay, the word Dimmi means that you are a person who is forced to live under Sharia. You have to pay a tax in okay. order to be protected and not persecuted. If you're anything other than a Muslim, according to the Quran, you are a Kufar. You are an infidel. And the, Bible, and the Quran says, the Quran actually says, that the worst creatures are those who deny Allah. So that's a great way to live in a Muslim state. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't take, I don't take any pleasure from that. Allah is a rough trans. There's no coexisting going Allah on. It was is a word in Arabic that means the one. Uh -huh. If you, so there's no way to say that Allah is different from God. I still don't know why you're arguing for the validity of Islam when you don't even believe in the validity of the Quran. I don't believe in the validity how do you, of the If you don't believe in the validity of the Quran, how do you know that Allah is such and such? Maybe the because Quran they, is corrupt in that part as well. They, the point sins. is, everything is corrupt. There so is, then why, why sit here and talk about it? Because it's fun. Okay, well, yeah, exactly. So it's futile. And this is what happens to you when you deny, deny your creator. You end up in futility. And so apparently you have, you, you like futility, apparently. I do not. I don't want to say, well, if it's all anarchy, then you're not Muslim because the Islam does not do yeah, that. Okay, well, you said you were when you came up here. So were you lying? Yeah. Okay. So anarchy. Fun. All liars go to hell, the Bible says. Lake of fire. Nice. I hope you repent and put your trust in Jesus Christ. With, without Jesus, you will perish in your sin. That's the reality of it, my friend. Yeah, you, can, you, you can play, you can play, you can play games with religion. You can play games with worldviews for only so long, but then you have to meet your Maker in judgment and give an account. Jesus said, "Every word that comes out of your mouth, the Bible says, you will give an account on the day of judgment. The books will be open, containing all your deeds, and all your deeds will come out as evidence of your guilt. And Islam will offer you no peace with God at that point. You will have no atonement, no forgiveness, no cleansing. There will be nothing to remove your sins." My so friend, I hope that you rethink. I hope you rethink your worldview, my friend. If I if I was a Muslim, would I also uh, burn in hell? Of course. So if I was also a Jew, would I burn in hell? Nope. If you, yes, of course. The Bible says if that. If I was unless, a Zoroaster, would I burn in hell? If I was a Buddhist, but Bible so says, worship the Lord your God and Him only. Have no other God. The Bible says Jesus said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God the Father except through Him." So yes, there's only one way to salvation, and that's through Jesus Christ. One way to salvation. Jesus, Christ Jesus doesn't die on the cross, and there's many roads to heaven. Is Jesus the God doesn't is give Jesus his only son, and there's many paths. Is Jesus a symbolism of God? If Jesus, is symbolism Jesus is the Son of God. He is God incarnate. The Bible teaches God is three and so one, God, Father, so Son, and so Spirit. God, These three Jesus, persons are one being, one God, one essence, God, one then essence all of God. One, and you can get through him. You can get to heaven if you believe in heaven. In any way, it doesn't matter if you're Christian, Jewish, or Muslim. That's not what the Bible says, no sir. But and since you, and since Jesus you have already, God, and Allah is this is an interesting God, conversation because you yourself came up here saying the Quran is full of lies and full of mistakes and contradictions, and yet you're sitting here telling us what Islam teaches. I mean, this is a true exercise in futility. Yeah, because I was raised a Muslim. I know you were, but I'm telling you, you have no good reason to make Islamic claims because you yourself don't believe in Islam, sir. You don't believe the Quran is reliable, so why would you appeal to it? Talk about a self-defeating argument. That's called a self-refuting argument. That is a self-inflicted so those two things. That is a self-destroying position. And it is. Anarchy. Thank you. You told us that already. But you know what? You don't live consistent with anarchy. No, you don't. You live in a very orderly fashion every day, sir. You know it. That's what happens when you reject your creator. That's another consequence is you end up living inconsistent to your claim. So this guy claims to be an anarchist, but man, he ties his shoes, he pulls his pants up one leg at a time, he takes his test, he goes to college, he obeys the laws of the land. Doesn't does look like an anarchist to me. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, my name is Thomas Stewart. Hey, Thomas. Uh, go, hey, everyone, real, go no, no, me no, no, green. No, 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 to me. 
I just want to say. For me or yeah, yeah. You have a question it. for me? Yeah, hold, if you're here to preach to the people, get your own microphone. No, 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 no. I was just uh, school spirit, man. Okay. Okay. Um, you have a question for me about I, Christianity I, or the Bible? I have a question about Jesus uh, huh? H. Christ. Was he white? I'm very confused about that. Because wasn't he? He was Jewish. What? He was Jewish. <laughs> What color is his know. skin? Uh, I don't know, and it is irrelevant. What? He wa okay, so he wasn't white, or, or he was. Was he? I have no clue what the pigmentation of Jesus Christ was. Okay. Next question. Next question. I'm just. It says in the Bible, Jesus had brown skin. I, does it? Wow, I don't know. Bring it to me. Okay, I'm just, I'm just curious. I was just wondering what color. Okay, yeah. What's the, another? Do you have a serious question about Christianity other than that? Well, that was a serious no, question. Other than that. Other, I, than, other that. than that. Yeah. Just to move on. Okay. Um, let's see. I uh, said, I, I said, I don't know the pigmentation of Jesus' skin. Yeah, yeah. I heard you. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of another huh? question. Yeah. Um, Are you a Christian or have a Christian worldview? No, I don't really think that's important. I'm just asking questions. It's absolutely important. It determines whether or not you go to heaven or hell. I mean, not everyone believes that. I might not believe it. I might believe it. It okay. doesn't really matter. I mean, it, if I tell you that, it just kind of Anybody have a you, question for me about biblical Christianity or the Bible? No, no, I have a question. Or the Christian worldview, please come to the what? microphone. So, wait, what's up with King yeah. Solomon and that baby? Can you just explain uh, that to everybody? Because I'm... I, 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 I was raised Catholic. Uh, so we heard a lot of really weird shit, um, huh. including King Solomon and the baby, and I'm just, I, I just really... Two women were fighting over a baby in order to determine yeah. which one it was, King right. Solomon finally came to the point and said, okay, cut yeah. the baby in half, yeah, yeah. give one to her, mm -hmm. give the other half to her, cool. and, the, right. and the woman who was the real mother of the child said, no, absolutely not, just give it to her yeah. so the baby survives, and the other one said, no, yes, cut it in half and I'll take half and she'll take half, and Solomon said, well, there you go, that's the mother, the one that wants the baby to live... That's the mother. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I got it wrong. He wasn't gonna go through with it, but it was a test. Right. I thought he just cut it in half and no, was sir. just Never like, "Here, no. you have the no. lower half, and we'll take the head and stuff." Um, Anybody have a question for me? A no, I, I have another question. I have another question about Christianity and the Bible. Question. Question about Christianity um, and the Bible. Um, what? Should I really stone my daughter if she has sex before she's uh, she's had her period? Should I do that? If you're living in Old Testament theocracy of Israel, you should, but you're not. So the answer is no. But if I was living in your depiction of a of a perfect society, I should. No, sir. That's a. Really? You, didn't, you didn't hear what I just said. No, but. You didn't hear what I just said. No, I don't. I don't really listen to anything okay, you're saying. Okay, next person, please. <laughs> right. I don't want to have an irrational guys. kindergarten count conversation. Hi, you're not going to turn me off this time, right? It depends on what you do on the microphone. I don't tolerate vile profanity and things like that. Oh, well, I didn't say anything vile. I literally quoted yeah, the Bible to you, and you turned me off. You started shouting and screaming. Because you turned the microphone off. I wasn't, off done, with, I wasn't done with the previous person. Yes, he passed it to <laughs> me. Anyway, you have a question so for I'm, me? Yes. Do you actually preach at a church? Are you yeah. ordained to be here? Ordained to be here? Well, yes, I am ordained by God to be here. But, uh, no, no, no. I mean uh, by your church. I do pastor a church, and uh, I do preach uh, every Sunday if the Lord so, is willing. If but I come out here because I think uh, this conversation is that I've been coming here since 2007. Oh, I've heard. <laughs> and I've been uh, sharing the gospel with countless students and uh, challenging their worldview and seeking to have a real, honest, logical conversation about religion and worldviews. Okay, well, yeah. I was just wondering if I could read something, something to you and see about your views on it. Yeah. Okay. If you'll give me one moment. Okay. Do you want some time or you have everything pulled up? I already have everything up. I just okay. got to get to it. All right, so there's 11 things that are I might very not get general. to all 11 because there's people that wait oh, no, and want, want to be respectful to people oh. that might want to talk as well. Oh, you want to be respectful? So you're going to stop talking over me? <laughs> Maybe. Wow, how Christian of you. So, one, do not give opinions or advice unless you are asked. Two, do not tell your troubles to others unless you are sure they want to hear them. Three, when in another's pla place of residency... Show him respect or else do not go there. You have if a question guess, for me about Christianity or the biblical worldview. But you said I could read to you. No, no, no. Yes, I, you did. If you have a question, I'll answer I the question. Get, I, asked, I okay. asked you if you would let me read to you, and you said yes. Uh, if a guest in your house annoys you, treat him cruelly and without mercy. Do not make sexual advances unless you are given the mating signal. 
do not take the, that which does not belong to you unless it is a burden to other people, person and cries out to relief. Since you're so impatient, I won't go forward. But do you know what those did are that, from? Did that come out of the flying spaghetti monster book over here? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. I'm wondering what you were reading. It comes from the Satanic Bible, who has more respect for a person's self than it does at the rape and torture of innocence. Anybody have a question for me about Christianity no, or the I Bible? Have to ask, what is your point on it? You're asking me my point on the Satanic Bible? How do you feel about well, it? Well, in a sense, it's a good illustration because, as Anton LaVey once said, do without will, right? And that is the that is the central sin of man, which is a pretended autonomy. The 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 idea the idea that man is self-governing, self-ruling, self-determining, kind of like the Cubist Manifesto. You can read it online which says man is the measure of all things. That is the diametrically opposite worldview to the Bible. The Bible says we don't live in harmony until we live in light of God and, and submit to His rule and His authority. You will anyway. The Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so all Satanists will ultimately bow the knee and with their mouth physically, according to the Bible, confess before they're cast into hell and consigned to eternal punishment they will confess Jesus Christ is Lord before they're sent to hell and so my thing is this submit now bow the knee now bow now or burn later period sorry and you know I prefer what? to stand tall uh, you won't stand tall that's the problem is, that's why I said well it's a, evidence it's suggests otherwise as I am standing tall in front of you no the Bible says that actually will humble the proud and the low and he will bring you low he will humble you to the dust matter of fact on the day of judgment it says you will cry out to the rocks and the mountains to fall on you to hide you from the wrath of the lamb it's ironic satanists go into satanism for power for some sort of spiritual high or some sort of but the reality is is that true power resides in the almighty god of the bible and you will see his omnipotence on the day of judgment or when you die and that's so, the reality. The Bible says your life is a vapor. You're here today. You're gone tomorrow. Where is Anton LaVey today? So, quick question. Like a vapor, gone. And all his satanic rituals could not stop the day of his appointment. Hebrews chapter 9 says he had an appointment with God, and he met it. And if that was, were the case, there wouldn't be Satanists. you have a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? Yes, I do. I have okay. many questions, but I don't know if you're going to turn me off or not. Oh. Hey, you want your own oh, no. microphone? I, I might in a minute, actually. See? Cool, dude. Ah, there we go. Just in case, you know? Sure. Okay, so we were going over evidence earlier, correct? What the gentleman with the skateboard, green shirt, might remember him and talk for a little bit because you wouldn't let him go. Um, so you were speaking about how there's all this evidence as to the Bible. Yeah. Well, he mentioned the flood. Yep. Now, there are scientific journals that actually state, yes, there was a flood, but it was not a worldwide flood. We disagree. You can disagree all you want, but it's That's studies. What I'm you. No. Well, I have studies, too. I mean, Henry Morris has five earned PhDs, and he was a proponent of a worldwide flood. Well, five? Do you have five earned PhDs? How many do you have? None. That's oh, why I did. So That's, why, me. That's why I said. I look to men like Henry Morris who had five earned PhDs, okay? So do you look towards women at all? If they have five earned PhDs and they agree with the Bible, of course. Name one. No, I said I, if they would. I, said, I don't I don't know of any. If you, know, so if you meet any, you let know. me know. I don't know well, why I mean, I that Google, matters. But, you know. I'm not sure why that matters, but but you know what I'm saying. I, well, I, I appeal to Christian scientists like Jason Lyle who would give great evidence and arguments. You know, he's an astrophysicist. He's very smart. He's a good friend of mine, a lot smarter than I am. But when it comes to evidence of the flood and things like that, I, I go based on the testimony of Scripture. That's it. And you may not like that. Of course not. You're not a Christian. Why would you? You're in darkness. How do you know I'm not Why do you Christian? Care? What would you care about that? Why would you assume that I'm not? Well, based on the way you were acting earlier. That was because you turned the mic off on me. Well, as I was quoting your Scripture. If you were a Christian, you would have hopefully at least exhibited the fruit of the Spirit, which is kind of peace and I mean, that was self -control. me. Like, <laughs> you really? have a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? I do have a question. Okay. Um, why do you stand on a pedestal above everyone when they're trying to talk to you? Functionality and safety. Safety? No one's near you. Thank you. 
That's my answer. You don't like so it. I don't know what you're you okay say. with him risking his safety? Yeah, of course. He's a lot stronger than I am. Oh, <laughs> how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, so, I can give you a microphone. Yeah, get, get the I'm microphone, not Jack. Get on the mic. <laughs> so, I mean, you're okay. Anybody have a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Ah, uh, yes. 1 Corinthians 7 17. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wrong verse. One Corinthians six ten. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Keep now reading. let me. Now keep let reading. me. Hold on. Keep hold reading. on. Keep reading. Why okay. Keep reading? Okay. Everybody, listen for a yeah, second. He doesn't want you to keep reading because then the next. What is the definition of reveler? Or effeminate or homosexual oh will God, not so inherit feminine. the kingdom of God. He doesn't want to read those verses, right? No, because that's all I need. You conveniently okay. leave those what out. What is the definition of reveler? So he conveniently leaves that definition out. Definition of reveler is to subject to verbal abuse. How many of you people would say he's verbally abusing you? Raise your hands. <laughs> the subject of verbal abuse, huh? Subject of verbal abuse? Yes, no. Not with a Greek word Anybody who raised their hand, you think he's going to hell. Because revelers do not inherit the kingdom of God. Anybody else have a question for me about Christianity? Go ahead. My church is better. Flying the game. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Test, test, test. Takes a second. Okay. Okay, um, I just, I, this is my first time here, but I've okay. heard of some of the things you've said. Yes. Um, can I ask, and it, it'll lead up to a question. Yeah. First of all, I just want to tell you where I stand and I want your feedback okay. on that. Okay. Um, very polite way, I promise. What is your stance on homosexuality? I assume it's the, the standardized, you know, like, I guess. what the Bible like, says. Like the hell. Okay. I'm a bisexual Christian. Homosexuality is a sin. I understand. I agree, but I'm a bisexual Christian. And the Bible also says that all sin is equal. Right? No, it does not. The Bible teaches that any sin can send you to hell. But there are some sins in the Bible that are uh, much worse than others. The Bible repeatedly speaks of great abominations in the sight of God. And Jesus even taught the fact that depending on the degree of your wickedness, your vile sins that you do, that will also have an effect on the degree of punishment that you'll receive in hell. Jesus taught that. I don't know what Bible you're reading, because in the Bible, homosexuality is incompatible with Christianity. So I you're living a lie, sadly. I understand why you think that, but I the Bible also... says so. Are you more authoritative than God? No. So then why don't you repent of your sin and submit to the authority of God? Can I, like, one thing? My God is about love and acceptance. My God's about spaghetti. But your God doesn't exist because you created a God in your own image. I mean, I'm just saying the God I grew up in church learning about uh -huh. is okay with me loving who I want to love. What, what, hold on a second. Will you use the word Christian? Yeah. Do you believe this? I do. I so, believe most of it, yeah. So he actually read the verse. Wait, most of it? Yes. Well, if you'd only believe some of the Bible, then you're not a Christian. I don't believe in the Old Testament because it's not relevant anymore. You don't believe in the Old Testament? I don't live okay. my life by it. Well, I didn't say, to, I didn't say live your life by it. Uh, but you should, as long as you interpret it correctly. Yeah. So you had a false conversion to Christianity. It sounds like you're not actually a Christian. You just you're a Christian by name, but you're not a Christian in truth. You're a Christian by name, but you're not a Christian in truth. You don't actually possess the saving power of Jesus Christ in your life because the Bible says you deny Him through your wicked works. Homosexuality is wickedness in the sight of God. I love God very much. In fact, He's helped me a lot through my life. But I also happen to love girls, and my God, I feel like is cool with that. Because why wouldn't He well, be a good God? Of course, you made a God in your own image, so why wouldn't He be cool with that? The pedophile can say, "My God is okay with pedophilia." Me loving girls is not the same as pedophilia. I didn't say it's the same, but it's equivalent in the sense of once you deviate from what the Bible teaches, there is no limit to where you can go with it. God also made me this way. No, He did not, man. Sin made you that way. You sinned willfully when you acted out on your sexual deviance. Just the same way an adulterer does or a fornicator does. It's not just sensitive to homosexuality. Any sexual deviation from the law of God is perversion. It doesn't matter if it's fornication, adultery. It doesn't matter if it's pedophilia, if it's rape. Anything other than what he has sanctioned and ordained in the Bible. One man, one woman, in a covenant of marriage for life. And uh, there are countless Christians, obviously, even in the Bible, 
That very verse he quoted, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, says of the Corinthians that they were homosexuals, but they were washed, they were cleansed by the Spirit of God. So that's what you need. You need to be washed and cleansed through repentance and regeneration, which means you've been born again. You turn from your sin and turn to God. There's something better than homosexuality. It is God. In very different churches and have very different ideas of what God is. I don't think you is, know what Christianity you. actually teaches on that issue. Thank you for letting issues. me talk and thank you You're for welcome. coming here today. Yep. But my point is, I love God and yep. I love girls and I think He loves me despite of it. You're wrong. And on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, you will be awakened. You will have a rude awakening on the day of judgment, okay. and it's sad. It's I would just very sad. To add to that, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I think what she was trying to say is. Um, I know what she was saying. <laughs> she said, "I want to. I want to. I say, what she said was, I love okay. God, but I love girls more.' I'm talking about the. I'm so I'm going to disobey God. That's what she said. I'm talking about the sin part. Okay. Not all sins are equal. It does say in the Bible that um, sins against your own body, like sexual sins, are of a higher level and abominations to God. Um, yep. Yes, but." Do you well, believe that? Yes, I do believe that. Okay. No, I but what I'm saying... So why don't you lovingly turn to her and tell her to repent? Because she's going to hell with her belief. There could be nothing more loving than trying to... You know, the Bible says, if you, uh, the righteous pull many from, from do, you know, away from destruction. You know what I mean? Turn people the away from hell. The way I'm trying to do hell. that is by loving those people in my actions, not sitting here So and telling them the truth is not a loving action? Oh, I would love to have that conversation with them in private. I mean, I you know what? One second. It's like 9-11. You know, it is the anniversary of today of 9-11. If you, ma'am, hold on a second. Actually, if you, ma'am, if you had prior knowledge of 9-11, and you were standing outside the doors of those buildings, and you see the people going into those buildings, gleefully laughing on their phones, sipping their latte, but you knew that in a few moments, those people were going to be leaping to their death from 150 stories. How would you try to persuade them not to go in there? Excuse me, sir. No, no. I'm pretty sure that you interrupted me you? and that's fine. I, took, that's okay. took the conversation no, yes, the yes. way that I intended. How would you instruct those people not to go in there? Would you? Would you tell them? Would you open your mouth? I probably would. What if that was your mother going in those buildings? I definitely would. How, to what degree would you do it? i tell you how I would do it. I would probably throw myself on the ground we can all agree and here. drag the person out of there at all costs. Listen. We can all agree here that all of us would would definitely, if we knew what the future holds. We do. The future and we holds. Do. Man, we, we do. do. We do. Excuse me. And so that's what I'm doing. Excuse me. The people, I'm to talk. the people who are not in Jesus Christ are in a 9/11 crisis. Yes. They're going to leap to their death in but eternity the Bible also in says, hell. The Bible also says that we need to go about ourselves. We need to go about this conversation in uh -huh. a mature way instead of. Instead of you don't like the way I do it, I understand. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, in order to, some people do not respond the same way. If we come at them in a con, in a condemning way, then they're going to turn away. And that's what I think the church has a problem with is condemning people. And yes, there is condemnation, but who we wow. are not the ones who are judging. Yeah. God is the one who is judging. I agree with you. And we can have conversations yeah. with those people in a loving way. Uh, but in you're you're way. interpreting me as being not loving. Well, That's sir, a judgment call. What I have a problem with is you are actually de demeaning some of these people. In what way? Um, well, one of the... Be specific actually, though, because I, I get this accusation all the no, time. But actually, specifically, how have I demeaned voice, anybody? The tone of your voice, the way that you interrupt well, I, people, this is a public the way that you're interrupting discourse. me, the way that some person... Alright, so Nothing anyway, new um, uh, Nothing new. you know, Same I never claim to be the most gracious, you know, most patient person she, she in the world, her, but at the same time, if you come to the microphone, you are prepared to have a, a public debate, her, and sometimes we talk over each other. If you're too sensitive, then we won't no, no, have that no. debate with I'm one saying, another. as a fellow Christian, as a fellow Christian, I just go about this in a different way. And don't I touch think... my equipment, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I don't want Actually, the officer over there to so put... needs to hold on to it for a little bit. Okay, what I'm saying yeah. is, I think that the way you're speaking to us, yeah. um, the way you're speaking to me, to sure. the way I...
I it's already not... got your point. You think I'm being disrespectful and mean to people. Well, you didn't listen to me, sir. So that's what you said. The way somebody was struggling with the mic, and you said, and you said in a, in a way that actually I think was was a little demeaning. Oh, somebody needs to help you with that mic. And there's several people. <laughs> <laughs> there's several people. Okay, I think, if that's what you want to focus on, man. No, I'm saying yeah. being a Christian is is showing love <laughs> and even in those little things. Thank you. And I think that's a better way. Yeah, pray for me. Me. I would I would gladly invite I would gladly prayer. Pray. I yeah. would gladly pray, pray for me in that. Does and anybody have a question for me from Christianity or the Bible? No, Go ahead. I, Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question. I keep hearing all this shit about sins. So I have an important question, guys. A really important question. So being gay is a sin, correct? According to the Bible, yes. Okay. And murder is a sin. Correct. So in the Bible, it says kill all gays. So is that a sin? Is it like a double sin? A sin squared? <laughs> is it no sin at all? Because like... It can't Okay, it can't stop. Important question. You kept saying gays are sins and murder is sin. So I needed to know. Thank you. Who okay. wants to speak? Wow. So does anybody have a question for me about the Bible or Christianity that's um, rational? I wanted to have a quick little uh, nice moment because everybody out here is very tense. So I am selling Kool-Aid pickles. I have three different flavors. You have a, uh, okay. They are four dollars. If you have a question for me about Christianity. Sour, green apple, and strawberry lemonade. Okay, so y'all can hit me up. If you have a question for me about biblical Christianity or the gospel, uh, you're free to come we up did. to the if microphone and speak. Hi, I'd like to say something. Yeah. So, throughout my life, I have been transformed time and time again by the radical love check, of check. Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, and I love Jesus because he was a political dissident who taught radical love and stood up for the oppressed and the marginalized. And you do not speak for him, and Jesus did not die for your bullshit, okay? Anybody have a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? No, no, that's okay, thank you. No, my I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I want to talk to a non-Christian about Christianity, so you have the Bible, right, or questions about the Bible. Yes, sir. If we can't have a rational discussion uh, about the Bible, then... Yeah, no, I, I have yeah. a question. Oh, yes, sorry, I thought you turned me off. No. Um, no, I, I was I was joking. I turn it off and there's a delay, so sorry if it takes a little no, while to kick fine. back on. Okay, you're fine. You're fine. Um, yeah. But let I, me just say, can I say something first? Yeah, here? Yeah, I'm here to talk to non-Christians about Christianity. Yeah, no, I'm, a uh, I'm not. I'm not even here to talk to Christians on the microphone. We can talk in heaven for all eternity. There are people here going to hell, and yeah. that's my priority well, is I'm to see right. them is to see them come to Jesus Christ for forgiveness. Yeah so that they can come to the cross, they can be forgiven and have eternal life. Okay. That is a much higher priority than Christians telling one another how to be nice or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. Uh, anyway, so I have a question about... That wasn't really for you. No, I know, I was just confused because I got up to the mic and then you started talking to me and... Anyway... What's your question about the Bible or Christianity? Oh, okay, yeah, um, so do you think Jesus slurped on Scrappy's nuts? Oh! Or... If you get vile... Hey, doesn't did you work. know that disabled people aren't allowed in churches according to the Bible? Fun fact. If you don't believe me, I can show you the verse. Does anybody have a question that's not uh -oh. filed? No, sorry, the microphone does not work for you. The kid's back. Sorry. Did you know anybody have a question for me about Christianity the or the Bible? Uh, you can use the microphone for that. Anybody else? No? No more questions about Christianity or the Bible? Anybody uh, else? Yeah, come on up. Hey, who has questions come about religion? Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Uh, no, no, no. I told this guy here he could go on the microphone, but you, give me one second and I'll just answer her since you grabbed the microphone. Go ahead. And then you'll go next, my man, if that's okay. So, we all know yes, according to the Bible, premarital sex is a sin. Yeah, it's called fornication. Okay, so what about like if an 80 year old woman has never gotten married? Do, is she just expected to like be a virgin her entire life? <laughs> No, so, like she pretty well. Can get married. <laughs> yeah. No, like what if she doesn't find anyone, or if she doesn't get married? She should remain celibate. Okay. Yeah. Trust God. <laughs> Trust God. If you're gonna be celibate, you said 80 year old woman. So what about the preachers you said about touching the little boy? Uh, do you have a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? Pull the microphone, pull up a little bit higher. You're kind of a tall guy, so. There we go. Yes, yeah. Um, couple quick questions. Yeah. One, do you believe in the Trinity? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, second question is, do you believe that Jesus drowned babies and toddlers with Noah's flood? Uh, he judged the world and destroyed the entire world, yes. 
Okay. Um, the next uh, the question, if the question is, did babies die in the flood, the answer is yes, I think. Okay. Um, There's probably babies in society back then, okay. outside of Noah's family. It's actually a, it's a parable of the judgment to come. It's a parable of the universal extent of the judgment of God. That doesn't mean the babies went to hell. I don't know that. But I do know that they died in the wrath of God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question is, why is sin bad? Because it's a violation of God's glory. Why is violating God's glory bad? Because I said, because that's, uh, holy. that's what God says. Holy. God said so. Okay. Because I said so. <laughs> because the Bible says so. Okay. Um, third, third one. Anything that's a violation, a contradiction of the glory of God is perversion. It is a deviation from God's moral perfections, and therefore it is corruption. It is corrupt perversion. It is lawlessness. Okay. That, that's why it's a sin. Okay. In Second Thessalonians 2:11, it says how Jesus sends powerful delusions and lies um, to people. Um, so do you believe that? Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11 is talking yes. about the time uh, of the end just prior to the return of Christ and that that generation will undergo a great delusion under the influence of an antichrist figure who I believe will probably in some way rise to some sort of uh, dictatorial leadership in the world and the world will be under a strong God sent delusion to believe a lie instead of the truth. But that's a consequence of their sin. It's okay. like judgment prior to the final judgment. Yeah. yeah. And then, Absolutely. Also, it's terrifying. I think we're under that already to a certain extent. Okay. I mean, how else do we explain people murdering babies in the womb, people, you know, uh, destroying the family, destroying marriage, you know, how, how, do we, how do we define any of that, you know, without... <laughs> recognizing the satanic influence in the world yeah how, yeah. how do you rec how do you reconcile um new old testament like issues with the old testament god with the new testament god Covenantally. the old testament is, is all about um just it's a lot of fear and death in the old testament and then in the new testament it preaches a lot of love so how do you re so uh, i don't think the i don't think i don't think the judgment and wrath of god in the old testament even compares to the judgment and wrath in the new testament apparently you haven't read the book of revelation Okay. Have so, you? Yeah, I have. Well, then you should know that the book of Revelation and the wrath that it conveys there mm -hmm. is far greater than the Old Testament. Okay. Um, also, one last question and I'll yep. be done. So, for like the slavery verses, like Leviticus 25, Exodus 21, where it yep. talks about being slaves with the rod and with the um, non-Hebrew slaves and how their offspring can also become slaves after them. Yep. Um, how do you reconcile the slavery versus? Well, under the theocracy, right, of Israel, yeah. the slavery was permitted for a time and for a reason. Okay. Yep. But we're no longer under a theocracy today. Got it. Yeah. Thank you for the time. You're welcome. Anybody else have a question for me about the Bible or Christianity? Yes, ma'am. Hi. So uh, I see that you reference the Bible like a fact, right? Yeah. Like factual for you. So how do you do that whenever there's been scientific proof against a lot of things in the Bible, and also knowingly, like oh, like all of the Big Bang Theory, like literally oh, everything about the Big Bang Theory. Huh? Well, it, I don't subscribe to the Big Bang Theory. I subscribe to the to the uh, alpha radiation <laughs> to the big place. I describe, yeah, God spoke bang. <laughs> Okay. How but, do you, uh, but I don't. I don't subscribe to the uh, modern evolutionary okay. Darwinian cosmology that says that millions and billions of years ago. When I hear that, it's it's like telling me you know far away and long ago in a distant land. Fairy tale from grown ups, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I that's my position. I don't expect you to agree because you don't have. If you do, especially if you do not believe the Bible is the word of God. How could we ever agree on that? Okay, so you say the Bible is the Word of God. So of there's been over 500 authors on the Bible. So how would you say that? Because did they speak to God authors, and then Ma'am, I don't know what on earth you're talking about. There are 40 authors, 66 books in the Bible, written okay, over 15 so years of time. Way, no, 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 no ma'am, it's not my 40 authors. It's, there are only okay, 40, authors 40 authors that wrote the Bible, not either 500. I don't either know what on earth. Either way it goes, how huh? do you say that that's God's Word whenever there's been over 40 people writing this? Uh, because of the impossibility of the contrary. God's word is inspired. And because we have the word of God, when you deny the biblical uh, message, uh, you show yourself to be in a place of impossible contradiction. But in other words, without, the biblical, Christ without biblical Christianity, my contention has always been that you don't know where you came from, who you are, where you're going. You don't have the foundation of morals, meaning, beauty. 
you don't have the foundation for logic, the laws of logic, laws of morality. Do you, are you a Christian? No, I'm not. Okay, how do you as a non-Christian, are you atheist, agnostic? Yes, I am. How do you as an atheist or agnostic, how do you have the foundation for meaning, morals, beauty? Uh, I respect get others, I respect myself. I no, that's called the We're logical... We're talking about morals, so I mean, what do you mean? Well, what you just said is called a logical fallacy of begging the question. I asked you, how do you account for morality? And your answer was, I'm moral. I that, am moral. But that doesn't account for morality. That well, just stipulates... It's called morality. begging the question. That's a logical fallacy. I'll say it again. It's a logical fallacy when all you do is repeat the thesis. I'm moral, I'm moral, I'm moral. That doesn't answer the question of where does morality come from? There's a lot of people here that are listening closely to the argument and they're following the logic. And the logic that you're espousing is fallacious. Because what you're, you're not giving us a reason. But you don't have any logic to depend on. You well, hold no on a logic. second. You depend on a Bible with 40 authors, yeah, before, and then you say that it's the truth, but it has 40 people's sure. truth. So you you believe in these 40 people. You I don't, don't think you understand God. the composition of the Bible. I, I think, think I do. I don't think so. I mean, you started out telling us there's 500 authors okay. in the Bible. That was definitely. I, think, I mean, you know, I mean, that tells me everything I want to know about your knowledge of bibliology. Uh, but when it comes to the non-Christian worldview, my argument is always, without God, how do you have morals, meaning, and beauty? I'm not asking you, do you live morally? I know that you do. I know that you live morally. I would say you live like a Christian every day. You believe in thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not lie. You, I bet you don't let people disrespect your parents because you don't like that because you have a conscience have given by God. I have sex and I have gay friends. No, I know, I I know that because you're not a Christian, so of course. You know, you can, people can live in so any, any manner of sin. Life. No, I'm saying that we don't do it consistently. I don't stone people. Right, that shows me your ignorance of biblical theology. Thank you. Once again, a very shallow, superficial approach to the Christian worldview. And that's fine. That's fine if that's the way that you want to approach it. But your eternal destiny is on the line. And it, to me, it saddens me to see people, like Jesus said, what are people going to give in exchange for their soul? And on the day of judgment, what did you trade for your soul? Some people will trade their soul for sexuality, for money, for pleasure of some kind, for utility, and all of that. The Bible says, left to yourself, you will give your soul for a bowl of soup. Uh, like C.S. Lewis says, you know, C.S. Lewis, the Chronicles of Narnia and all that, near Christianity. You know, C.S. Lewis once famously said, the gates of hell are locked from the inside. People will gladly go to hell rather than submit to God and surrender their will to God and surrender their lives to God. They would they would much rather stand on the paraplegs of hell for all eternity and curse God. Much They would much rather do that than to submit to a holy God. That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why we need salvation. Because without Him, we can't, we'll never turn. Without Him, we'll never change. you have a question for me here? So... You made like a passive, like on so You can uh, raise the microphone so people can hear you a little bit more. It was like a little dig at her for having a shallow understanding of Christianity. Well, she did, very much so. As soon as she told me there's 500 authors to the Bible. I haven't even gotten halfway through my sentence. Yeah, but you made an accusation. I, an accusation, it was an, obs it was an observation. There's a difference between the two. Right? Um, you have a very shallow understanding of how it is to be an LGBT individual in America, and so how can you I'm gonna try my best to be there. Okay. get on her for having a shallow understanding of Christianity, but you don't even understand what I'm going through, what we're going through, because if you truly understood what it was like, you would not be speaking like this, you would not be uttering these things out loud in front, in public. It is very difficult to be LGBT in America, uh, still today, and sitting on this corner and yelling out about how it's so bad to be gay, and how it's a sin, and how according to your ethics, it's wrong. That's a problem. And I think it's really disrespectful to everyone around you, and it just demonstrates a shallow understanding of empathy and compassion. Well, of course you would think that. You're not a Christian. You don't live for the glory of God. You live for the glory of sex. I mean, <laughs> you know, sodomites in the Bible in, in the Bible are characterized as worthless men. A person, a person that has debased themselves to the level of sodomy is a person in the Bible who has basically become worthless in the eyes of God. I know that. I know that. Uh, I, I know that. Uh, that is so unpopular and so politically incorrect to say that. But I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Uh, it's because you were not created. It's like God offers you honey to live for His glory, and you prefer to eat sand. Uh, God is offering you living water, but you prefer pollution. I mean, that's the difference here. It's either God's holiness or perversion. And that gentleman has chosen perversion. I have a question. 
Hi, Bones. Hi. Oh, you remember me. So lovely. Anyway, I just had a question about... I, I've been here for a minute, so I kind of... I was paying attention. So someone brought up the molestation of children by preachers. Oh, wait, that was me. And I was wondering, since at that point you said... Well, how can we expect them to live a celibate lifestyle? What, why, they have to control these urges. But yet, you tell no person that an 80-year-old woman is expected to be celibate for all her life. So... Uh, yeah, you completely misrepresented what I, I did said. not. Yes, did. No, I did not. Well, let me try to tell it again. What I said was, is that yes, the Catholic... Oh, I have people! Evidence! Yeah, the cat. Well, I have it on record. The Catholic priest... Oh, so you can rewind it. The Catholic priest belonged to what's known as the priesthood of Catholicism. Yep. The priesthood is an unbiblical institution. Nowhere in the Bible, in the New Testament Church of Jesus Christ, did Jesus institute a priesthood of celibate priests. What I'm saying is that these priests are going into a state of celibacy that the Bible nowhere sanctions. And so, of course, they're going to take their sexual frustration out on children or whoever they can. Because okay, but that doesn't make sense, because that right there because is a sin. Because they are if submitting they are themselves to men, something that is totally can... not ordained by God. Don't you hear what I'm saying? Yes, are you hearing what I'm the, saying? I, first of all, I'm not Catholic, I'm Christian. Good second of, second of all, it. well, it's different. Second of all, the Catholic priesthood, I'm telling you, is perversion. But done the same exact thing. It is not. No, it's not, ma'am. You don't understand the distinction between Catholicism news, yes. and Protestant. Okay, Sorry. Christian priests have been caught having sex so with what? children, the Bible condemns babies. It. So what? The Bible condemns it. Okay, but it's not stopping them. But you're going to condemn a what? woman okay, for so having sex. Right, so you you're going to condemn all of us that no matter how we love, with... The Bible condemns all forms of sexual perversion, so do you okay. agree with that? No, I don't, because there so are verses a, in that Bible that so allow as a person it. So as a person that doesn't care, well, let me ask you this. So you, so you obviously don't appeal to God in your morality? Not your God. <laughs> okay, what God do you appeal to? Allah? I don't feel... No. I don't feel like that is relevant. It is absolutely relevant. It will no, dictate your worldview. I am talking about Christian priests. No, Mavis, it will dictate your worldview. Would you stop interrupting me, No, please? I won't. And uh, we can't have a rational conversation ever because she will not just, you know, she won't stick to her own worldview. Yes, According to her worldview, how do you have morals without have God? To to Here's a person arguing about morality but doesn't have a foundation for morality. Yes, I do. But you will not let me finish the sentence. <laughs> What's the foundation for morality? Once you reject God, moral relativism is the, that's the name of the Why game. Do you need God? Right Anybody thing. have a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? That is the question. Go ahead. Why do you need God? Yeah. Well, she's going to yell, right but you can go ahead. Ma'am in the green shirt, go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Have a rational... Yes, I do have a rational question. Yeah. So I am a Christian, right? I've been to church all my life. Typically, the Sunday. microphone is not for Christians, but okay, I'll let you well, quickly, make a okay. quickly make a statement or a question. So you're question. trying to attract people to the right lifestyle, but how do no, you I'm attract... Not. You're, you're telling me you're not preaching God's no, word right I'm now. I'm not trying to attract people to the right lifestyle. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, yes, knowing that the word of God is the power unto salvation. And so the power of God in the gospel is the, is the power to save a soul. If you, don't, if you don't agree with the way that I'm doing it, please pray for me, but that's not a conversation I'm willing to have. So you're telling me you can condemn everyone, but I can't ask you a question. If you knew the Bible, ma'am, if you knew the Bible, then you know that according to John chapter 3. But where have you opened the Bible this entire time? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm black and I'm God, so I don't need According, to, according to the Bible in John chapter 3, and this is a, supposedly a Christian, John chapter 3 says that man is already condemned. I don't condemn anybody because everyone, according to scripture, that's not in Jesus Christ, is already condemned. I'm just simply telling you what the Bible says. People take it as condemnation because they don't like to hear people exposing the evil of their worldview. That's your problem. Do you have a question for non-Christians? Is there a non-Christian that has a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? No. Not unless you're renouncing your Christianity through your behavior. <laughs> Anybody have an intelligent question for me from a non-Christian perspective? If you are a non-Christian, go ahead, ma'am. 
One second, one second. Are you, are you have a question for me about Christianity or the Bible? That's relevant. Okay, well get your own microphone then because I'm not here to let you preach on my microphone. Get your own microphone. I welcome you. Use your freedom of speech. Go for it. But what I'm saying is that I'm here to talk to non-Christians. I'm not <laughs> Whether you're atheist, evolutionist, postmodern, homosexual, whatever, and you have questions about the Bible or Christianity, that's what the microphone works for. If you don't, if you don't, it's not for you. Yes, ma'am. So you are not a Christian? I am a Christian, and I know you're saying this is for non-Christians, but if you look at the Bible and all of the stories, yeah. Every single time is sitting on the ground preaching, and everyone is looking down at him. That's wrong. Looking up at him. Oh, what did he do? Jesus preaching on the Mount of Olives. He was up on a mountain and said he went up to the mountain to preach. He's sitting on it. That way everyone can see him. That's like an acoustic. Yeah, yeah. He's still sitting. Okay, what's the point? What's the point, man? Above everybody else. With this? Yeah, you're like above everybody else. This offends you? This is a $7 stool from Home Depot, and they're using it for two reasons. Functionality, so that I can see where everything and everybody's at. I keep my eye on the officer that's back here. I keep my eye on certain people that might want to damage my equipment. And there's a psychology that comes with, hold on a second, there's a psychology that comes with preaching on the floor with everybody else. It invites violence. I've been doing it for 20 years, and every time I've ever preached on the ground, people are tempted to get violent. Okay? So we disagree. If this is a sign of pride, you don't know what pride is, ma'am. Because this has nothing to do with pride. Any, anybody, anybody who's a non-Christian that has a question for me about Christianity or the Bible, I thought you were Anglican. know that 2 plus 2 is 4? I thought you were Anglican. I am, but apparently I'm a non-Christian based on the statements you said. Turn it, turn the microphone over and tell us why you think you're not... According to me, you're not a Christian. What have, what have you denied? Have you denied an essential tenet of the Christian faith? Well, uh, I believe in, in the priesthood. That's a, as a the Roman Catholic priesthood? Yeah. Oh, then you're not, certainly you're not a Christian. All right, you then we can discuss this. Yeah. So the, the Roman Catholic priesthood, when it's described in its rites, doesn't use the Greek word hieros, which is what people think of, and that's what polemics use to describe a priest. That's, it's not the right word. It's a presbyterate. Presbyterus. No, it's uh, presbyteros. Presbyteros. Yeah. The presbyteros means elder, not priest. Uh, but the word priest. It's synonymous the word, with the word priest is just presbyter written short. Hold on, hold on a second, sir. The word presbyteros in the Greek is synonymous with two other words. Do you know what they are? Episcopos and um, I forget the rest. Poimen. Okay. Poimen is pastor. Okay. So poimen, episcopos, and presbyteros. These are synonymous terms of a single office. And that office is pastor, because Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 3, only has two offices, pastor, deacon, that's it. You agree with that? I'm aware of that. So that is not dealing with the concept of a priesthood in Catholicism. Catholicism, the priesthood, is sacerdotal. Uh, depending on how you define sacerdotal. Meaning that the grace of God comes from the priest to you. No, he no. is a mediator. No, yes, no, he no, is. He Yes, he is. So we just disagree. My study of Roman Catholicism certainly teaches that through the priesthood comes the grace of God infused into the believer. The, the Even East, that's right. And the priest is the the priest is the altar Christus during the Mass, another Christ. Yeah. He also stands in persona ecclesiae. That's the older tradition, right? Standing in the person of the church representing itself. To Everybody God. Uh, respect the officers here as they're trying to clear the sidewalk, stand on one side or the other of the sidewalk so that we can keep the sidewalks clear, please, as much as possible. As long as people can walk through, then we are obeying the law. If not, this really kind officer will come and put us in our place as she should. We disagree. Anybody have a non-Christian question? Uh, a non-Christian have a question for me about the Bible or Christianity? That's what the microphone is for. The reason I'm here today is the reason I've been here since 2007, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He died, he rose again, he defeated death and hell. If you repent of your sin and put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will be forgiven, you will have eternal life, and you'll go to heaven when you die. If not, the Bible says you will go to hell and die in your sin. And I pray and I hope for every one of you that you'll make peace with God before you die so that you go to heaven and not hell. Please. Trust in the life-saving message of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. Are you done? Do you have a question for me? Yeah, I was wondering if you could open up your Bible and read some of the passages and stuff. Oh, okay.
Three of the stuff of what? Like, what you passages, like, you keep on throwing out these facts about, like, church. you say that Noah's Ark, and I want to hear, the, like, I'm really caught up in the uh -huh. like, you said, Yeah, but where do you say it every single time? <laughs> Well, well, what's the problem, ma'am? I don't know. Like, show me you want me to read what right now? I want to hear, like, word for word. You said every animal, right? Oh, the animals that God brought so to Noah's Ark, two what by two. People are saying, and they don't, it's not lining up with what they were saying when they were on the mic. So it makes me wondering if, like, how accurately are you putting this stuff? Like, uh -huh. I know you're paraphrasing, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, God says here, I will establish my covenant with you. You shall enter the ark, you and your sons, and your wife, and your son's wife with you, and every living thing, all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, birds, animals, every creeping thing, two of every kind will come with you and be alive, and for you take for yourself some of all food which is edible and gather it to yourself and it shall be food for you and for them the animals thus noah did according to all that god commanded you believe that word for word of course every single word. in context yes in context well tell me about the context of this case. well again uh it's not an allegory it's actually a historical narrative historical narrative is not to be held to the standards of scientific didactic literature if you because that that would be like you taking a test on poetry and then your your uh professor judges you according to the merits of a scientific paper that would be unfair or if he told you to write a paper based on scientific data induction or deduction and then you give him an, you give him are you listening or you give him or you give him poetry in return ma'am if your professor asked you to hand in a didactic piece of literature with rig rigorous logic and you handed him a piece of, of, of satire or a piece of poetry, he'll give you an F on the spot. You know why? Because you confuse the genres. Historical narrative is not bound to these rigorous scientific standards. As long as you don't understand that, because it's because the Bible is a literary work. The Bible has a literary work. It's composed of dozens of genres. It's not just one kind of writing. Period. Okay, I have a question. Yep. Okay, so um, I'm a Christian, but the thing is, is like you said that the no matter how many times I say the microphone's not for Christians, Christians of all people do not respect the rules. That's not right. <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, ahead. so um, you said that the Noah's Ark is a historical narrative. So do you believe that Adam and Eve is also a historical narrative? Of or course. So, so you think that as they, Jesus did. Yeah. So they were the first people on earth, correct? That's right. So in the Bible it says that af after Adam and Eve had eaten the forbidden fruit, they walked down to a nearby village. But if they were the Where first. Where does it say that in the Bible now? Go Adam and Eve walked by to a nearby down, village. Down to a near, nearby village. No, ma'am, that doesn't say that anywhere. Open in the Bible. The Bible. Well, I have the Bible here. Okay, I know Genesis it. 1, 2, and 3 very well, very it carefully. Does. It, does. it does not say that whatsoever anywhere in Scripture, ma'am. Uh, I'd be very interested to be like a verse I've never heard of in my whole life. I've only read the Bible about 30 times, cover for cover. I know it really well. I've examined the evidence, Genesis 1, 2, and 3. I've read it carefully. I, I've been studied. I've taught Genesis, uh, you know, many times on many occasions and many portions of Scripture. Nowhere does Adam and Eve walk down to a village somewhere. Uh, but Adam and Eve fell into sin, and because of Adam and Eve's sin, we all inherited a sin nature. And because of Adam and Eve's sin nature, God is going to uh, give us justice if we do not seek forgiveness through Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible calls Jesus the second and last Adam. Genesis 3, 16 to 24. Okay. Yeah, where does it say they went to a town? A village. Where did, they go? Where did, where did it say they went to a village, ma'am? God told Adam and Eve they must leave the Garden of Eden. They could not live there anymore. Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden and headed to a nearby, nearby village. What verse is that? Genesis 3, 16 to 24. No, what verse exactly does it say they headed to a nearby village? It doesn't. That's why she can't. Have a good day. Exactly. Right. So there's no verse that says that. I, I don't even know what the point of doing that was, other than to say that you got to be careful how you read your Bible. 
And that's what I try to do every week here is I try to give people uh, specifically what the Bible teaches as much as possible. Yes, ma'am. You believe in God, yes, that is what you are saying. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, what does God say about belittling people? Belittling people? Making people feel stupid. Uh, it just depends. I mean, sometimes the Bible says... So you have the authority... Sometimes the Bible says, you know, don't answer a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him. And then it says, answer a fool according to the folly that he deserves, lest he be prideful in his own eyes. So what's the Bible saying there in that proverb? What it's saying is sometimes you need to show a foolish person their folly. Who is the fool in the Bible? The Bible says in Psalm 14, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. The person who rejects God is a fool in the sense that they have adopted foolishness. Because without God, you don't have a meaningful worldview. Okay, I have another question. Yeah. So, say I come up here and I sound really stupid, right? Are you saying that because I was stupid, you have the authority to do the, the things that so many other preachers have been convicted of? You know, like you have the authority to break me because I am stupid. What in the world are you talking about, man? What on earth are you talking about? Ma'am, what on earth are you talking about? When when anything that I say today tells you that if you come up here and you sound stupid, that someone had the right to rape you? I mean, so how, would how you, in the world did you come to that conclusion, ma'am? So where does it end? When you are... I may have the right to refute your logic. Mm -hmm. where does but it I don't know how you got to the place of rape. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, okay. So, someone comes up here and you tell them that they are... Shallow? Yes. Uh, the, the argument might be shallow, yes. Okay, cool. I typically don't tell people on the microphone, hey, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're funny. I don't do that. That's called an ad hominem attack. But I do expose the weakness or the self. But sir, you've been saying we're going to hell, so like, I'd rather be called stupid than tell I'm going to hell for sinning. So what's the tea, sir? What is the tea? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Anybody have oh, a... Excuse me, sir. You right. have said, okay, turn off the mic. So, and, does anybody have a meaningful question for me about biblical Christianity? Come on up. Come to the microphone, please. The microphone is for non-Christians who have a rational, mature, grown-up question. Want to have a grown-up conversation about religion, Christianity, the Bible, logic, philosophy, history, ethics, things like that, you know? Uh, you're, you're more than welcome to use the microphone if that's the case. If you want to be vile and irrational, the microphone does not work. Yes, ma'am, you have a question for me? Come to the microphone, please. Closer, closer, because we can't hear you. Okay, I've been standing here for about an hour. Yeah. Right? You said something about, like, the rules, but from what I know... Pull that down a little bit so I can hear you. From what I've heard about the Bible, I'm not a Christian. Okay. From what I've heard, God is supposed to love and accept everybody. Why that's wrong. I don't know what you've heard or where you heard that. Why is that wrong? Because the Bible says that God sets his love upon his people, those who repent and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And the Bible furthermore says God hates everyone who works iniquity. And so you can either be a child of God or a child of the devil, according to Jesus, chapter 5 of John. Okay, but you can be under the wrath of God, the anger of God, or you can be under the grace of God. Real quick though, you just said that Adam and Eve were the first sinners, which made us all live in sin, right? So then uh, we inherited our sin nature through okay. Adam and Eve, yes. But how is that different? How is that different? Yeah, because if we're all Different sinners, than what? Because if we all have the nature of sin... Then we all then need salvation. Exactly. Then so we should all repent of our sins and put our faith in Jesus in order to gain salvation through Jesus Christ. But that is a gift of God. God has to turn your heart because left to yourself, the only thing you will do is rebel against God and treasure and love your sin until it's too late. And so our only hope is to fall down at the mercy of God, at the cross of Jesus Christ. God does not give His only Son to die of brutal death on the cross if there are many options on the table. Why would he give his son to die for us if he didn't love us to begin with? Because he gave his son as a payment for sin. See, because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the atonement for the sin of his people. So God, in providing his son, is giving us the way out of being in a, a, a relationship with God that's one of wrath and judgment. 
And so God, in a sense, loved his people in Jesus Christ, even before he got into a relationship with those people. That's why Jesus is so crit critical, so important. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We have to trust in him, repent of our sin, put our faith in him, or we will perish, the Bible says. In other words, he is our only hope. He is the hope of the nations, the Bible says. The hope of the nations. He is our only hope. As long as you look to yourself, you will be, you will live and die condemned. And I pray that you will not. Hey, I found some quotes to talk about how God loves us. First of all, we're in John, John 4. Anybody have any questions for me about Christianity or the Bible? I have questions on why you keep muting us and keep saying hateful things, and you will not answer. So, What's your question? My question is, how come you said, God does not love us, God does not love, yet there is quotes, I will cite the source in this Bible, saying that God loves us. God loves all of us. God sees all sin as equal. There's two levels to the love of God. One level, God is benevolent as a creator. On another level, God loves us in redemption, in salvation, salvifically, redemptively, meaning as part, it's like this. Okay. If I'm at a wedding, and I'm officiating a wedding, I'll turn to the people and I would tell them, hey look, to illustrate his love for his bride, for his wife, it's like this, there are many wives in the crowd, and I love many of them, I know many of them, I love them all, but I have a special love for my wife that differs from the, the love that I have for all the other wives. On one level, it is a benevolent love, a love of friendship. On, on another level, it's an intimate love, it's a love of a, of a, of a marriage bond. Well, first totally of all, different. Sir, you I understand think, that? I understand that, sir. Good. 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 Great. Anyway, sir, I was pointing out this. I believe that God loves us all equally. To not why they put us on there? Why would I be gay if God doesn't want gay people? Explain that, sir. Don't. You are gay because of your own sin. That's right, sir. I'm a sinner, and guess what? I'm still going to heaven. <laughs> He's going to flying spaghetti monster heaven. <laughs> I'll go there too. Does anybody have a question for me? about Christianity or the Bible. Maybe Monty. Monty, I haven't seen Monty in a long time. What's up, Monty? Why are you gay? No, I'm not. You know that. You have a question for me about biblical Christianity, the gospel, especially if you're not a Christian. I'm so, not here to talk to Christians. I'm here to talk to non-Christians who are rational and non-vile. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll the so, microphone so we can hear you. Uh, I, yes, this is more of a history question. Okay. Uh, the Bible was written by men. That's what the Bible says to control men in, you know, 2,000 years ago. No, ma'am, that's not what the Bible says. <laughs> that's not what the Bible says, but that is what the Bible is. It is a method to control... Tell that to the martyrs who died for the Bible. Who were they controlling? But we're still following those rules, um, huh? which are spread hate more often than it does love. What do you... Do you um, the premise is wrong, what you just said. The premise is false. It was written by men. You disagree with that. No, no, I agree with that. Okay. But I disagree men with the are motive. sinners. You have said that multiple times yourself. So yes. the Bible is written by sinners for sinners. How, why should we follow it then? So here's the deal. I agree that the Bible was written by men. That's what the Bible says. But the Bible is not written by men that wanted to control anybody. They are conduits of revelation from God. I mean, the Apostle Paul, who wrote the book of Romans and wrote... I mean, I've studied the history of Christianity very extensively for over 20 years. I know, I know what happened and how the church developed. No one ever in the true Christian church has used the Bible to control people. That's just simply false. I would like an example. I would like a. I would like you to give me. Ma'am, I would give you. I would give. I would ask you an example, a date, a historian that would support what you're saying. Okay, I'm not a historian. I'm a I, I asked you if you have a historian that would support what you're saying. Politicians I, use religious texts to uh, condone bad things all the time. And oh, sure. Anybody time. can use the Bible for any twisted agenda. Right but we were talking about the authors of the Bible. <laughs> we were, well, I don't know how I'm controlling anybody, but what I'm saying is that the authors of the Bible did not have the agenda to control people with the Bible. It was simply revelation from God. Uh, it was to confront people with the Bible and the claims of the Bible, certainly. But it wasn't some, you know, conspiracy to control the masses. The Bible is countercultural. 
It doesn't succumb That's to the culture. That's why it so much uh, during that age. Um, yeah. It, it appealed so to So you don't have a Christian? Class. So you're not a Christian, you said? No. Uh, atheist, agnostic, what is, what, 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 what's your worldview? Don't know? I believe that there is a higher power. I don't prescribe to a humanistic uh -huh. being that is flawed in and of itself. Um, a humanistic being. <laughs> God is described about. as a person. He killed yep. so many people. Oh. If you want to believe in, you know, he's a personal heart. God. He is a personal he God. Is flawed. If you know, he, like how as is a, a good being? Why would they kill so many of the things that they created? Why do we live in a world where so much uh, shit exists? Like, yeah, the question you're asking actually is you know, Adam and Eve, whatever. But the question you're asking is actually the creation thing. thing. Yeah. Well, the question that she's asking is called theodicy. The question of God and evil. How can a good God do? How can a good God punish good people or something like that? Or how can a good God control evil or those kinds of questions? Uh, and the, the the answer to that is twofold. Number one, the Bible answers that God is good and he does good when he punishes evil it is good the reason that evil exists is because there's not a God <laughs> as a non-Christian what is evil as a non-Christian yeah. what is evil does it actually exist so if you want to get into what is good and what is evil um, that's a pretty petty question on oh, is it? Okay. the grand scheme of things okay. because in the grand scheme of things we don't really matter there's an entire fucking universe out there with Consistent, on. It's a consistent worldview that we don't matter. That's why I've said for years on this campus, with, yeah. right, without God, you don't have the foundation for morals, meaning, or beauty. Exactly as this non-Christian has just stated. Wow, we for have saying I'm no, not moral. Are you vegetarian? No, 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 no ma'am. No, ma I am. I care about the animals. Oh, boy. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> I'm actually doing stuff in my life. That actually According to you, there's stuff. no morality. You said it doesn't matter. We have no meaning. Just because nothing matters doesn't mean oh, yes. that <laughs> you can Okay, so... <laughs> Just because you, nothing matters what now? Say it again. You can look at it very uh, negatively and take advantage of people, or you can give back and put as much good back into the world. But if nothing, nothing matters, what is good? I think you need to rethink your worldview, yeah, man. Just, uh, I think you need to rethink your worldview, uh, and I think you do too. I think you know it in your conscience that you don't have a worldview that makes sense. Why? I'm done because here. Neither do you. you. None of us do. Thank you. None of us know what's going on. You're don't judge these people, man. You don't know these people. No. <laughs> you don't know what they believe. I go on to this. I go Many of these people have a worldview that actually makes sense because they believe in God. Yours doesn't either. Are you kidding? What do you know? You know no more than I do. Well, you know, according to your rule of view, even if I told you to something is meaningless, me, I have to go to physics, which is something Dude, that makes why sense. Do, why do Thank physics you. if nothing matters? Why do physics if life has no meaning? See, of course, the Bible says people live as if life has meaning, because it does, but not because of their worldview, but because of the Christian worldview. And according to the non-Christian worldview, as you just heard out of her own mouth, we have no meaning. And if we have no meaning, why is she doing physics? If physics is just a random combination of molecules and matter, random does not have meaning. You have a question for me now? Hi. Hi. Um, I'm not Christian, but every Christian that I have met has been some of the most, like, the true Christians who follow, you know, the rules of being a good person are some of the most kind-hearted people that I've ever met. However, you're not being very representative because your rhetoric and your tone are actually insulting to people asking questions. Therefore, it's going to frighten people from following the religion that is so beloved to you. Well, I appreciate the criticism. I disagree. I think that uh, the reason why people come to hear what we're doing out here in public is because despite what our culture has told us, public discourse and even, yes, public debate is actually something that we're starving for in this culture. And that's why people come and do it every week with me because they know that despite our political correctness, I'm not being mean to you just because we disagree. What has happened in our culture is that political correctness has led to this hypersensitivity where we can't just have a conversation, passionately disagree with each other, and still be okay. You immediately say you're hateful. You immediately say you, you, you're being unkind to people. Just because I tell you what I believe, based on the Bible, is true. That according to scripture, we're sinners, condemned by God. 
when we die, in our, if we die in our sin, we'll go to heaven, not hell. And then what we must do, therefore, is trust in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. He rose again from the grave. He defeated death. You have an answer for death? I don't. Not apart from Christianity. There is no answer for death apart from Christianity. You can go follow this guy over here and believe in the flying spaghetti monster if you'd like. Go for it. But I promise you, it will not make you happy in the end. Sir, in a debate, you let the other person speak as well. Did you know that? You're speaking now. Yes, but it took me a while because whenever I try to speak or whenever anybody tries to speak, you speak louder than them or you turn off their microphone or you cut them off. If you're that sensitive, then maybe my microphone is not for you. And that's fine. You don't have a ball and chain. You're free to leave. I don't think that you have any sensitivity for other people and their opinions. Well, I actually do. If you listen carefully and you watch many of the videos, uh, I have lengthy discussions with atheists, agnostics, homosexuals, as long as they are rational, cognitive, as long as they don't divulge into vulgarity or vileness. I will, I will sit here and reason hour after hour with students. It might be passionate. I might talk over you a little bit. But I guarantee you, I'll leave the microphone on and let you make your point as long as you want to, as long as you're rational, every time. In a debate, you must have respect for other so people's other, opinions, yeah. even if you don't agree with them. And you haven't been very respectful to anybody who doesn't agree with you. We disagree. Do you have any questions for me about Christianity or the Bible? What benefit do you get out of arguing with college students at a liberal college for fun, as a grown man? Uh, it's not fun as much as it's right. I'm here because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And so students that have come up to me over the years as I've done this, and they told me, hey, you know what? I was, uh, I was an atheist. I was agnostic. I was a Buddhist. I've had so many testimonies. I was homosexual. You've made me rethink my worldview. I want to thank you for that. I've had students come up to me and tell me I became a Christian years ago listening to you preach. I recognized my sin and my misery before God, a holy God. And God, by His grace, gave me salvation through Jesus Christ. And not too long ago, I, st I stood on the steps over here with a young lady who listened to me preach. And she was fornicating with her boyfriend, living with her boyfriend. She knew what she was doing was wrong. And she recognized her sin one day, and she came to Jesus Christ. She came and told me her testimony, and it was absolutely glorious. And now she's a Christian. She goes to church. She loves God. God changed her from an enemy of God to a friend of God. So I believe the gospel has the power to change and to save people's souls. That's why I do it. It's not for fun. Well, although sometimes it is fun. I do enjoy logic and reason, and, and I do uh, enjoy argumentation and uh, debate, debate forums. I do enjoy that, but that's not why I do it. This is a means to an end. I hope that one day that you can find it in your heart to respect other people, their lifestyles, and their decisions. You can let people come to you with open arms, but you cannot force any of your worldviews on other people. It's disrespectful, it's cruel, and it's wrong. Thank you for your ideas. Do you have a question for me or statement? How are you doing? Good to see you. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, yeah. The, even though most people, a lot of people, I wouldn't say most, but a lot of people don't agree with your methods. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's kind of fun for a lot of people just to watch. I just wanted to say, from paying attention and looking, um, I like, uh, you know, having the fact that we have the freedom of speech in the Constitution. Yeah. And it, it allows people to ask you questions and you to respond, even if they don't like your, the way you're going about it or your worldview. I just wanted to say that I like the fact that we can do this in the United States of America. Remind me again, are you a Christian? No, sir. Uh, what are you, atheist, agnostic? Uh, agnostic. Okay. You haven't changed your position since last we spoke. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> uh, do you now have a foundation for meaning, morals, and beauty without God? Uh, what was it? What did you say? Do you now have a foundation for... Thank you for the, the, the comment, however, but now... My question to you is, does I care about your soul more than just, you know, uh, our own politeness here? I care where you're going to when you die. So, do you now have a foundation for morals, meaning, and beauty without God? Uh, I would say that my foundation for all of those morals still relies entirely on uh, culture. Okay. Uh, I mean... So you think it's a convention of man? Uh, in a way... If it's a convention of man, would you not agree that morality actually does not exist? Um, 
there's no universal morality in other yeah, words. There, there is no universal yeah. morality. Yeah, and so my argument, you know, and just for everybody here, once you reject universal morality, you don't have morality. All you have is a convention, and therefore you are left to have to say by consistency that nothing as detestable as you can think of a, of, of, you know, today, you know, since I've been here, we've talked about abortion, we've talked about homosexuality, we've talked about pedophilia, we've talked about rape, we've talked about murder, and in your worldview, you have to conclude none of those things are actually wrong. Culturally, it just depends culturally. In, in my and then opinion. I get attacked by students when I tell them that I have students like yourself come up here and tell me pedophilia is not actually wrong. I would say it depends on the culture because in some <laughs> exactly. I mean, in some cultures. So according it's not to wrong. according to you, there is a culture in which a grown person should and can have sex with a child. In cultures, yes. I mean, there are cultures that don't work. The Bible says this is what's called futility of mind or darkness. Because once you reject your creator, this is a consistent worldview. I actually thank you for being consistent. Because he's, he's saying it's not right. It's, I, and he's saying it's not actually wrong. He's I, saying it does, it, there's no actual right or wrong. May I clarify? Yeah, go ahead. Try to clarify. It, it, uh, it's what you're saying. It's, it's exactly what you're saying. I just want to clarify for everybody yep. around me. Um, the reason I say that it's a cultural thing is because, I mean, for example, um, in the 15th to 16th century in Southeastern Asia, uh, premarital sex was uh, just a culturally acceptable thing, not in uh -huh. Europe, which is what makes me think that uh, it is... Uh, a culturally, you know, sound. It's a cultural thing. I mean, the reason. Situational ethics. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, uh, from my point of view, from my my secular point of view, the reason we don't murder each other huh? is if we murdered each other, that's less humans for the human population to grow. And like I said last time, that. Uh, but even that is not a universal law or a universal standard, true. because the person on the microphone right before you was a nihilist, self-professed. Yeah which means they believe in nihilism or nihilism, which means destruction yes. as the ultimate principle. So to them, they're the opposite of what you are arguing for, which you're sort of arguing for like a utility, right? You're, you're a, so, sort of a, let's, let's work and function the, uh, the way that will make the most people happy, yes. right? But again, philosophically, that is not a path to establishing true morality. Because the person next to you could be a nihilist. This is true, yes. There you go. I agree, I, I agree right. with that yeah. statement. So, what I'm telling you, my friend, is that you're actually exactly what the Bible says. In the Bible, it says when you reject God, you stand in opposition to yourself. You are self-opposed, which means you can contradict yourself. You refute yourself. It's a self-inflicted wound that reaches and touches every aspect of who you are, philosophically, morally, ethically, and that should be evidence to you, my friend, of your deep need for your for your Creator God. And the only way you'll ever know Him is through Jesus Christ. That's why He died on the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross for existentialists, relativists, postmodernists, nihilists, atheists, agnostics. Why? Because they're hopeless without God. So I hope that you find peace with God, my friend, before you die. It's your life. No one will be with you in the end. You know, I've done many funerals over the year. I've preached at many funerals, including my own family members. And when you stand over the grave of someone and preach, I tell you what, there's a sense of ultimate reality that hits. The reality that for this person, life is over. Their fate is sealed. It is finished. It is over. It should be a reflection to yourself. It should speak right to you and say, wow, well, what happened to the day when the pallbearers come and what happens the day when they come and dig my hole in the grave? Because that day is coming if God doesn't return. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else have a question for me about biblical Christianity or the Bible uh, or religion? Uh, very simple what we do here. We share the gospel of Jesus Christ in the hope that you will come to know him in truth and inherit eternal life. 
I mean, I don't really have a question so much. One is I just want to tell you I respect you. Except for the mic, I can't hear you. Uh, I don't have a question so much, but more is I just want to tell you I respect you for what you do. Oh, well, thank you. I respect you, too. I don't have to agree with all the things that you say. Right, what right. What you're doing out here is actually very empowering, and I, I appreciate what you do. Oh, so, yeah. Right. All right. Well, I hope that you do become a Christian. That's the whole point. But thank you for the comment. It won't happen. Yeah, you know, I'm convinced over the years, some of my best conversations have come in the midst of so much conflict and strife and, you know, so much uh, debating that people, if you get past the initial shock of it, realize what we're talking about, this conversation is the most important the most important conversation you will ever have because it's a conversation about your soul, about your destiny, about your eternity. I mean, think about it, you guys. If the Bible is true, and it is, heaven and hell hangs in the balance. A hundred years from today, I promise you, I can make you this promise, you will not care who the president was. You will not care who won the Super Bowl or the NBA Finals. You will not care who performed at the awards or whatever. You're not going to care what the latest technology was. I guarantee you, you're not going to care how many friends you had on Facebook or Twitter. You're not going to care what was going on on social media. A hundred years from today, and here's the reality, maybe sooner, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I preach to young students just like yourselves. I obviously say this, you know, I say this all the time, because I'll never forget the lesson I learned preaching to a young man in Southlake. His name was JB. I labored trying to share the gospel with this young man. I really like this guy. And he listened to me for a long time. At the end of our conversation, it broke my heart. You know what he said? He said, man, the only reason I go to church is because of that. And he pointed to a nice, shiny uh, Ford F-150. Beautiful truck. If I go to church, my mom lets me drive that truck. <laughs> I said, oh, so you go to church just to drive that truck? I said, yep. Well, that week I picked up my newspaper at the end of my driveway. I picked it up and on the front page, JB had taken that beautiful shiny truck and crashed it into a ditch, I think in White Settlement, and he died. I thought I was just talking to that guy on the sidewalk, pleading with him about the gospel. And at the end of the day, he just, he rejected it. And I hope he found peace with God before that. Yes, sir. You know, you're right. I should have kept that article. How are you doing today? I don't know. I'm, I'm doing good. What's up, man? Uh, so I have a question for you. Okay. Earlier you were talking about how today is, of course, 9-11. Yes. And uh, I think we would both agree that suicide is a sin. Yeah, Self-murder. Yeah. So uh, my question would be, we've all seen pictures, terrible pictures of people jumping from the towers. And video. Right. Jumping, for, jump, jumping from the towers to their death. And yeah. because they would rather face an instantaneous death by being crushed rather than burning in the fire. So, would that be suicide or would that be something else? That's a good question. Uh, I would say at the end of the day, it's not suicide because you are not premeditatedly murdering yourself, right? You're actually trying to escape harm. But in the escape of harm, what you're hoping for at that point is survival, not murder. I don't think you intended to murder yourself, so I don't think it would classify as true murder, self-murder. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. But you know, it illustrates a very deep point. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus told a story, or he told, he answered he answered the the report that came out about the Tower of Siloam, where people were killed by a tower that had fallen and killed a bunch of people, kind of like a 9-11 of the ancient world. And the people asked them, well, how, how does that happen in life? You know, people are just hanging out, tower falls for no reason, kills many people. And Jesus, you know what Jesus' answer to that was? His answer was, I tell you the truth, if you don't repent, you will die in a similar way. Because what he was saying was, that's exactly what the judgment of God is like. One day, A tower is going to fall. Not a building, but it will be the tower of God's judgment. And the question will be, are we right with God at that moment? That's it. Nothing else matters at that point. So I hope that people come to see that. You know, That's a great question. Thank you for that. Thanks. Anybody else have a question for me? 
non-Christians that have questions for me about the Bible or Christianity or anything like that, or you want to just share something, go ahead, please. Yes, ma'am. I had a question about his last question. So would you define it as not being suicide because of the intent behind it? And like I think so. Survival, or because right. Of the lack of yeah, because maybe your hope, because the hope by jumping is survival, not murder. So it's not the premeditation part? Yeah, I think so. But it's even the attempt to save your life at that point. Okay, what about manslaughter or some would term it as murder by either self-defense or non-premeditated murder? Yeah, there's manslaughter. Yeah, sure. Would you term those as sin? It can be depending on the behavior that you were doing. If you got drunk and killed somebody in an intersection. My, my uh, cousin was killed in an intersection by a drunk driver, you know? And uh, obviously that person never intended for that to happen. But because they were delinquent, it is manslaughter. And I think it's just to punish them accordingly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you very much. Anyway, it's good because it asks questions about morality, ethics, gives us a, a foundation for how we can know whether or not we're living in a just world or an in